unregimented. ChristopherMedia.net And now a game of commercial chicken brought to you by Progressive, where we see how long Flo can go without talking about insurance. Ready? Go. So, um, have you noticed how everyone's grammar is completely awful now? Like, you know, the texting and the LOLs. Whatever happened to punctuation? I mean, drivers who switch to progressive can save big. Okay, you win. We can't help but save customers money. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspat. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. Christopher Media, let's make some noise. From Asthma Core Studios near Detroit, Michigan. It's unregimented. Gangsters, what's up, guys? And now, here are your hosts. All right. Thanksgiving weekend. Chris. I'm Aaron. I'm Rich. And, yeah. Hi. Hey. We did it. It keeps going, huh? So we knew that Trump wasn't going to concede, but the. The other, the flip side of that coin means that Biden gets to win over and over and over again. I get. I, <laughs> I, I saw a story yesterday. I didn't, I didn't share it with you guys, but I saw uh, he said that if uh, the electoral college certifies Biden, he's just going to quit. He's just going to leave. Like I said, I saw some, several reputable. You know, it wasn't like you know, uh, takeourcountryback.org. It was several reputable news organizations that essentially Trump yesterday was like, yeah, if they certify him, I'm out. Which plays into what say, we've been saying about he's going to. He didn't quit, say right? he was going to step down. He said that he would. Well, I mean, uh, what's? A, I don't know exactly what he said. I, I remember reading it, but he didn't imply that he was just going to bail. He was saying that he would basically concede to uh, a peaceful transfer of power if if Biden gets the the electoral the electoral college votes. I just I'm trying to clarify because you you make it sound like. As soon as Trump knows that he's not going to win, he's just going to, like, step down. Yeah. Let me try and find it here just to make sure I'm not insane. Right. So the the implication being, like, he's just going to stop. He's going to let Pence take over if they award the electoral votes to Biden. Uh, I suppose. I mean, on paper, that's what's supposed to happen, right? Because if he's not there, well, oh yes, yeah. If Trump does step down, then then by then uh, Biden, then uh, the other gray-haired guy, yeah, the other old <laughs> all these old dudes. This isn't this isn't anything really new. <laughs> no, as far I, I, I don't as, think as far so. as as far as theories about what was going to happen, because well, it was the first indication that Trump was actually somewhat connected to reality. Well, if he's trying to avoid any type of federal entanglements, he has to step down, and and, and Pence has to pardon him. It's that's the Nixon playbook. That's yeah, I think we might be t- conflating two things. So he, he this was like his first indication of, of actually going along with a peaceful transfer of power. But in reality, yeah, I do think that he's going to uh, he's going to take the pardon just because why not? Right, even if it doesn't. Even if a pardon doesn't stop him from being prosecuted at the state level, he can still go, oh, I was pardoned, and they still came after me. See how crooked these guys are? Uh, right? Because it's just like all these court cases. It all adds to the story. It doesn't matter to Trump's team if these are getting thrown out with prejudice, with you know, with excoriating uh, decisions from judges saying that these are, are – totally baseless claims it doesn't matter to the trump team it all adds to the story uh, Aaron, so now now what are you left with you're left with a number we had x amount of court cases and yes they they killed every one of them but that just means that they're they're crooked against me yeah by the way yeah doing my research you you are correct all oh, the headlines because the, the the headlines make it seem and you know 
I'd been drinking on Thanksgiving, but <laughs> I, yeah, the, head, it, the headlines make it sound like he was going to take his ball and go home. Well, yeah, what do you it, think? What do you, Washington Post: Trump commits to stepping down if, elect, if electoral college votes for Biden. What would you think? Well, Seattle Times: be, Trump says he will leave if electoral college votes for Biden. Right. To be, now, to be fair, I mean, this is that is his mo. Get involved in the situation, no matter what the sure. situation is. At the minute it's not stroking his ego or paying, putting money in his pocket, he just stands up, walks away from the table, and says, "Good luck with that," and he yeah. leaves everyone to fucking sink or swim on their own. I was fooled but by it, the headlines. It, it, it is a bit of a twist with the headlines. That I mean, they're trying to twist it to be uh, more. I don't inflammatory. So basically, Bill because, Maher's because nightmare I, I, won't happen now. Is what he's I saying. I saw the, the the piece of video that they're referring to, and like I said, I don't have the exact quote in, in front of me, but he was basically saying that he's going. It's going to be a normal, peaceful transition. Yeah. It, but he's not going to concede to that until. Uh, the electoral college votes, but yeah, uh, I didn't see the the headlines ma- turning it into something where he was just going to to bail at that point. I don't see the the point of of doing that. He he just needs what a couple days, right? Yeah. He just needs to step down a couple days early, and Pence gives him the uh, he you know gives him the uh, the pardon, and that's it. Well, if yeah, if there is if the state of New York is as hot to try it. To get his ass, as some people are saying, <laughs> okay, yeah, you know, you're not worrying about a federal charge, but what are you going to do with state charges? Who- oh, he's very worried about the the state charges. He just wants to be while he's being prosecuted by the New York State. He wants to go on television and go, "They pardoned me. I was pardoned, and they're still coming after me." That's just his angle on it. It's not going to protect him in any way just like the lawsuits aren't going to make him president it's still our legal system he's still loaded my money's on it'll be in court till he fucking dies if he's if he's serious about rerunning in 2004 I wish. He, he can't he, he, or 2024 excuse me yeah. he can't he can't blow it up on the way out the door he can't shit all over it like a fucking drunken monkey on acid and start smearing it in fucking people's faces. He has to play the game to an extent on his way out the door if he wants another shot in four years. Yeah, and he says he's going to run, and I think that he, I mean, he, he probably will. I don't think that he's going to run with any intention of winning. It's just, you know, he saw how much press he got. When he got all this free press uh, when he ran the first time, and I think that was his only intention initially. So he's he's going to he's going to run again. I don't think he's going to run again with uh, any uh, with any passion uh, or think that he's actually going to win. And the problem with the problem with all this tearing down the institutions and saying that they're all corrupt, it's just going to make uh, liberals more resolute in their vote. And Republicans are going to be less sure about it. Well, why, why would I go out and vote again when you told me that the last election was such a sham? And they haven't fixed any of these issues. You know, it's he's eroding his own base's uh, faith. Uh, I think you're. I think you're it's still us I think versus you're, I them. I think you're trying to speak some shit into existence. That sounds like hopeful wishing on your part to me, man. His base is pissed off. His base is convinced. These are I'm talking about the cult, the the, the Kool Aid drinkers, not the average person who's like I gave him a chance in 2020. He's an idiot. I didn't vote for him in 2024. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about the hardcore Trumpers. They're never going to believe anything but that he was ripped off. They're never going to believe anything that, but the system's crooked because the hardcore fucking the hardcore people in 2000 are still crying about the fucking 2000 right, outcome. Right, but but That's so- 20 years ago. The Republicans want to hang on to him and think that he's going to be a kingmaker, right? He's going to be the guy that that wherever he points, his base is going to go in that direction. But how do you say that the whole system's corrupt, and you know that the, uh, the, the Democrats are just going to cheat and win elections anyway? But by the way, you should vote for this guy over here because I like him. Because it's us versus them. 
Right, it's us versus them, and but people, I've already people have I've already memory. filled your your head with information about why the voting system is corrupt. Yes, but this country has proven over and over and over and over again we have very very short memories. By example, the Supreme right, but the, the recent Supreme Court shit the, where everyone the, forgot that the other side was saying the other side memory shit. Is like we don't we don't have a, a strong passion for voting in the first place. So it doesn't really take much to tip us back over to the ah, fuck the system. It, if 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 more candidates, if if, if more uh, polarizing candidates come from the left, I'm telling you, the 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 people on the right won't care because it, when you get down to it, it's still us versus them, and that's really what it's about now. That's completely separate from what I'm saying, though. You can't you can't use the institution that you've eroded. You've eroded your you've degraded your own weapon that you want to use if, if, Trump, you, if, if you need the votes to get the people that you want in office <clears throat> but you've told all the people that you want to vote for you that the system is corrupt i'm not saying that means that none of trump's supporters are going to vote going forward i'm going to say it's going to erode the faith in, in the voting institution enough that it's going to have long-term lasting damage to the republican really. party because the Democrats got in in 2000. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm just stating an opinion about what's going to happen in the future. You can't go, not really. Yeah, no, I'm, no, because I'm, I'm using, no, because I'm using an example from the past. You can, you can because have weren't the Democrats opinion, trying to erode that trust in all of the 2000s based on the 2000 election, yet it still, yet their base still managed to be, to come out and vote no. when it was time to vote. Mm, but, but it's really not the same situation, is it? It's not the same situation, but the the, the, de- the Democrats but the leaders trying to erode say, faith in the system is like, still the thi- they didn't thing throw that's still there. That, the Democrats didn't throw everything that they had at the wall that could possibly be voter fraud. No, but they were still trying to erode trust and stealing the election. They were still trying to erode trust. They, they didn't. They didn't try and erode trust in the voting institutions. Really. Aren't okay, they the ones that came, Hold on a second. Hold yes, on a second. because it came down to the courts. We're still talking about 2000, right? Yeah, but haven't they been the ones spearheading this whole abolish electoral college talk for the last 20 years? And it's all because they still got to stick up their ass about 2000? Uh, yes, but that's not, that has nothing to do with how your, well, it does have a lot to do with how your vote is counted. But that's not, so the Republicans are saying that your vote's not being counted properly or they're counting too many of the other sides. What the, the Democrats are saying in 2000 is we have a system that is not a one-to-one, like, you vote for uh, a candidate and whoever gets the most in the popular vote wins. I'm that was their issue. How I'm, debating, they weren't, I'm just saying they're, it's all you eroding are debating trust. How, so, it's so all you're saying, eroding you're saying trust. it's the same thing. It's not, a, it's not eroding trust in the institution. It's saying that here's a, here's a part of the institution that we think needs to change. It's not saying that the the Democrats were not saying that the uh, that um, the electoral college was corrupt. They were just saying it's outdated. That's really a, a, a quite different message. Except for this year, they weren't. The this Democrats year works fine. Weren't, the the uh, no. <laughs> There's not a lot of liberals saying that. They're saying it worked okay, fine in 08 we, in 2012 as well. We, we got our we got our guy in, and it, we still need to abolish the electoral college. Right? Well, I mean, why why wouldn't they? Just because the electoral college worked for them this time, it still means that uh, even if you got rid of the electoral college, you would still have Joe Biden as a winner because it would be by popular vote. I know that's what I said. You're even hearing the belly aching this time around because the system that you heard it in 2016. Here, here's where I think we're. If if people are I'm conflating, if people are conflating Trump's base with Republicans, then there's a problem here. One, they didn't learn anything from the Democrats that, excuse me, the Democrats in name only who supported Bernie in 2016, and yeah, even though he bent the knee and said, yeah, okay, I, th- I, uh, I, I, sure, I support Hillary Clinton. Why not? He, a lot of his voters just fucking said, fuck it, I'm not voting. I'm not voting for that bitch. These, those are the type of people Trump has in his corner. His cult, his cult members, his true believers are not Republicans. They're only loyal to him. So Republicans are thinking that they're going to somehow get him to give his blessing to his, to his followers to vote Republican. They're out of their fucking mind. He's already fucking, he's already painting people 
in the news and in the media who've been in his corner and carried more water for him than God knows who as traitors to him well, because they yeah. refuse to get on fucking TV and go, I'm going to spout a bunch of bullshit that's complete lies about how, what and how the system is working at the moment. I'm not doing that, Trump. I don't give a fuck who you are. I, I know you're president. I know I wanted you to be president over Biden, but I'm not willing to tear down the system just because you're a petulant baby who didn't get his way. And so they're traitors now. Mm-hmm. So the, I think the Republicans got a lot. Uh, there is, there is, for better or for worse, Biden seems to have at least in this election cycle pulled enough people who were just either Democrats, your classical liberals, your, your, you know, your, your, your center left people. And pull from the disappointed far left just enough to win. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't see the Republicans coming together like that. And because the Republicans don't have a boogeyman. Biden is not scary to Republicans. Biden's a joke to most Republicans. Well, no, Biden is the joke. AOC is the boogeyman. But she's not running for president. In the yes. next four years. That's, yeah, well, no, no, yeah. No, no, but people think that AOC is the reason that we have Biden, right? So we couldn't get, she couldn't get Bernie, which would have been her first choice, obviously. Biden is the, the second best because Biden doesn't have a clear platform. He can be, it can be applied to him, right? He's just kind of a, he's a get things done guy. So I'll make him get my thing done. I mean, this. There may be some truth to that. There may not. I'm just saying this is, I think, what the uh, what the right believes is the the true threat. The threat isn't Biden himself or Harris. It's the uh, it, it's uh, liberal fascism. See, I I think that probably one of the best and worst things for the Democratic Party would be if Biden doesn't serve a whole term for whatever reason, and Harris steps in, because the the Progressives and the and the and the we got to check off our check mark counters are going to love that because just like you said, Biden is kind of a, a blank slate. They can project what they want onto. Well, he'll yeah. We'll, we'll project our agenda onto him and say go get this done. They can project almost anything they want on Hang 'Em High Harris. Four years ago, I mean, I, I sent you guys the news clip from the AP four years ago. They're saying first. You know, uh, uh, a Jamaican woman and an and, and East Asian woman elected. And then four years later, first black woman. Wow. I, since Rachel Dozel, I've not seen race change that quick. Her and Talcum X. Now, I guess you can throw Harris in there. And like I said before, I don't even blame her for that shit. It's the media doing this shit. Right. She's smart enough just to sit back in the buckwheat, keep her mouth shut, and lay back in the cut and collect the fucking... The votes that, that, that this type of pandering bullshit is going to get her. Well, but I mean, I mean I, but think about it. Right? It's think like you, if you have if a you're gimmick. Smart, if you're smart, if you're a smart politician, yes. Is Trump a smart politician or is Trump just a demigod? Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, Calm you know, me, little Calm be. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't think he's, I, he, he's too, he doesn't oh, right. play the game. If, the, I, if he couldn't dictate the, 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 the rules of the game, to the Republican Party, and they didn't let him do that four or five years ago, I don't think we'd be sitting here talking about him as being president for the last four years. But they were so desperate and thirsty for a win. They sold their souls to this man. And now their party is pretty much fucking fractured. Well, I mean, well, but, at- so this is, this is the point that I was trying to make earlier. So, the, what, so these people who we identify as diehard MAGA Trump supporters, right? And these, and they didn't. They may have uh, voted Republican in the past, but they haven't been inspired to vote in recent history, right? So the, your your base is conservative, but you're a lapsed voter because you haven't been inspired, right? And now Trump comes along and gets you inspired again. Now that Trump is going to be out of office, and now that he has on his way out, completely shat all over the institutions that put him in office. What does that that still diehard MAGA supporter do? Do they go on to vote Republican no matter what, even though they've been told by their savior that the system's rigged? I think these people go back to being lapsed voters. They'll have a conservative base to their beliefs, 
and they'll spout all this shit off online. But whether they're actually motivated to go and quote unquote waste their time at the polls, I don't see them doing that. Yeah, to an extent, I can agree with that. I so think Trump, so I think a very Trump small, por- and Trump taketh away. I think a very small portion of his his maggots will will fucking, you know, continue to vote for Republican. But I, for, for the most part, I think you're right. I think these right. people are disenfranchised who looked at him as this is throwing a hand grenade in the middle of Washington D.C. and this is what we want. Yes. So, th- if you were looking to Trump as being the future of the party, it's. It's not really. It's not a sustainable future. No, something crazier not, is coming. Because it's not you, right. You didn't gain. You didn't gain those people into your your base. You just glommed on to somebody. You had com, you had a common enemy for a short period, and now you guys are going to go your separate ways. They, they got to find somebody crazier because because 2012 they gave you the two closest things they have to Republican glasses of milk, and it didn't work. They got creamed. So in 2016, they give you the shock candidate, and they win, and it just it, it and I guess it wasn't sustainable for two election cycles. So I, I see him going crazier. Well, no. So why would you though? But you just said it wasn't sustainable for two election cycles. So why would you up the ante on that? I think they're looking to find something more. They're fi- they have to find their own version of Biden, somebody who's right in the middle, just a little bit crazy enough to say the stuff that's going to get people riled up. But not so crazy that he's not controllable. And you just said DJ. T- you just said Junior. I'm telling you, like the conversation we had in the chat. He's he's Daddy, but not scary. He's 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 Donnie Light. He's yeah, the Don. The he's the, he's yeah. the Trump that but won't scare away all the, the white he, women. He doesn't bring the cult of personality. He doesn't bring he doesn't. the fucking bombast and the bullshit that Trump brings. And that's what you so many people love him for. He's a little bit smarter than his dad. A little bit smarter enough so that he knows that it's actually bullshit, right? I think Trump is, Donald Trump himself is able to put himself into a mindset where he's fooled by his own bullshit, and that's how he's able to lie with such impunity. I think Junior knows he's a carnival Junior, barker. Junior doesn't have that. He doesn't have that. He, no, he's not a carnival barker. A carnival barker can at least, uh, the Carnival Barker knows he's full of shit, but he goes out there with a straight face and, and spews the saying. same Junior bullshit over and over Junior knows he's putting on the straw hat and a striped vest, and he knows everything he's about to say is a bunch of shit, but he doesn't care. Whereas, he knows that his dad's the Carnival Barker, and he'll never be that Carnival Barker. He'll always be the kid with the chalk out hitting the marks in the crowd. Yeah. Excuse me, I was muted there. I hope I'm, I'm, I'm right about this. I hope that Trump is like a one-time flare-up that gets this bad in either of the parties. Yeah, but, describe them like herpes. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> like take take your anti-herpes medication and call it a fucking day. Hope you don't. You know, but gee, if we suffer another breakout, hopefully it's it's well down the road. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not another four years. Yeah, but I do think Trump is the the perfect storm of bullshit made Trump. Because the right had been looking for something since 2008, and they tried it with the, with the Tea Party and the teabaggers. Didn't work. Fell apart. Trump threw his hat in the fucking ring. Well, I mean, hey, was, Jesus. Uh, Benghazi, you know, Birther Gate, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, they, they jumped on every fucking little thing they could because they were losing their minds over, I can't believe we lost to Obama. I mean, remember... Remember the, 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 the vitriol that was put? All he is is a community organizer. He hardly has any experience. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, then yeah. what did they do? They went and got someone with no experience yeah. elected a president. So, yeah, there you go. See, that's, that's what worries me. Because for a long time now, a lot of the tactics that have been used by one side, I'm not talking about the politicians themselves. I'm talking about the people that support the politicians. A lot of the tactics that the people who win any cost on the left have used is the I feel my truth, you make me feel this way, et cetera, et cetera, poor shit. And the right prided itself on pull yourself up by your bootstraps, stiff upper lip, you know, st- be stoic, be a man about the shit. 
well, now that they saw that, that crying like a bitch wins, they've, ado- they've adopted those tactics. They're just as whiny as these fucking... Fu- the, the extreme right is just as whiny as the extreme left now. Everybody's crying about their goddamn feelings and how other people make them feel. Shut the fuck up. Your feelings are your problem. Go get some therapy. This is not for the rest of the world to deal with. Your fucking neurosis is not our problem. Go work that out with a fucking with a psychotherapist somewhere and leave us to fuck alone. Problem is, it's not going to happen. And these people are now looking for something even more extreme. Because he's with Biden to me. Until until proven otherwise, I, I truly believe it's just a brief respite back to the center as a reset. We'll get back to politics as bullshit usual here in America momentarily. Probably, probably. I, I hate to see what the midterm election is going to look like in 2020. What kind of shit show we're going to have to live through that shit. So I... We, 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 you pick your poison. Because now both parties, uh, you know... Biden isn't the and Biden is not the the Democratic Party's final form. That's not who they're going to ride off into the sunset and and ride or die with. All right, he got his foot in the door, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Great, wonderful. If people can go back to just basically ignoring ninety percent of what politicians say instead of waking up every morning and grabbing their phone and going, "Oh my God, what did he say today?" Because who the fuck was doing that when Obama was in office besides people who were obsessed with taking him down? Let's be honest here. Did we talk about fucking uh, the goddamn president every fucking goddamn week for four years when Obama was in there? No. We do it every fucking week on this show with Trump. So he's a reset. Great. Wonderful. My question, what comes after the reset? Because I don't see it getting any better forever for us. You say Don Jr.? I Really? That's some Papa Doc, Baby Doc shit. We're just gonna really, we're just gonna pass the presidency around like a party joint between Clintons, Bushes, and and Trumps now. I, fuck, I didn't even want I didn't even want Clinton and Bush in the circle, let alone Trump. Right. Fuck out of here. There's uh, still plenty of extension. Obamas out there. Yeah, this is an extension of the Obama <laughs> machine. A lot of his appointments are people that were already in the Obama administration. Yep. Well, I think if if yeah, I get to say this name, Janet Yellen again. If, if if Michelle Obama was going to throw her hat into the ring for politics, I think she'd have probably done it by now, I'd, I, I would think. I mean, there was plenty of people saying, what if she runs? And I'm sitting there thinking, what What the fuck is she qualified to run for? Yeah, being married really to work. the president doesn't really count. Yeah, so you're, uh, you're, you're, you're presidential material by injection? I, I don't, okay. And then, of course, people were like, whoa, what the fuck is... How is Trump qualified? I'm like, eh, fair enough. I never said he was. I'm just asking a question here. Well, make sure qualified to be president. And you know, to be fair, I would ask the same thing of Gretchen Whitmer's husband here in Michigan if he all of a sudden decided to want, like, well, no, you're married to the governor. No, you want to be the governor. It's not how this works. Yeah, I always thought that was weird. Like when Congress people die and their wives That's step in, I'm just still like, still going at Debbie Dingle. John yeah, and I'm thinking now she's got it. So if the job is so easy that anybody can do it with literally no experience, then why don't we just go find a bum up off the street, clean him up, and fucking put him in a suit and have him run? What's that? But that's not how it works in regular that was life either. supposed to be the job. <laughs> like, if Aaron dies, his ex-wife doesn't get his job. Like, it's not how it works. <laughs> like, if I die, my, if, my, if my wife dies, I don't get to be an art teacher. You know, like... <laughs> No, and you're you're right, Aaron. The problem is, is that people have turned this shit into fucking careers, and that's yes. uh, that's a whole another argument and discussion for another day. But that's the reality we're dealing with because it, we have to deal with it. We have no choice. This Which is, just is why happens. it's starting to resemble more royalty than a civil service job. Mm-hmm. But and meanwhile, I, we. We we seem to be becoming more and more obsessed with British royalty as as the Brits are becoming more and more tired of their own royals. That just seems like a lot of waste of taxpayer money. Like they, that, none of them seem to have jobs. They live pretty exorbitantly. Where's where's that I, money come from? I don't think I've ever met a person, an English an English person, who's ever defended the royalty to me. The closest I can think is. Yeah, they suck up a lot of tax money, but they also generate a lot of a lot of tax money with people. A lot of tourism involved yep. in that. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Coming to look at the palace and blah 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 and this and that and right. And I don't right. know if it's really defending them. I guess it's just trying to justify their existence. 
why? What else do they have? What, they what, don't are rule people shit. People gonna go and drive around the circle. And go, There's Big Ben, Parliament. What do you mean? What else do they have? How many hundreds of years of colonialism? Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, our country's their fault. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's the closest I've ever came to anybody who's from that that part of the world defending them and like i said i don't i don't even take that as defending them just this i'm trying to justify their existence is is what it comes off to me and it's like aren't they like welfare fucking queens essentially living off the state i i mean i I, that the queen is a welfare queen run on that palace ain't cheap i know that they gotta own it by now right well and all the bullshit comes with it all the security all the you know the, the 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 Jesus Christ. What, what do you think her staff looks like? What do you think the royal family staff looks like? You know what I'm saying? In 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 their in their different parts of the country that they're that they're residing in, because it's not just at Buckingham Palace. There's royalty all over fucking Europe. Right? Yeah, they're not exactly the sharing resources. <laughs> they're no. footing the bill spread all over. Markle and William to live here. I'm sure well, they're the, paying yeah, the, the rent on that place they're staying here. No, they're not. That you know, they, well, because well, they've they've openly yeah, like, they, separated themselves from it. Yeah, but you know what they what they're not telling you is they are still getting money for it. They are still collecting the checks. I, I forget what they're still they're pulling. What they're still pulling in. They are still collecting money. Yeah. Well, I mean, I got to imagine you're you are Prince Charles and Prince Princess Diana's kids. You have to have like a trust fund or something somewhere, right? You know what I'm saying? It, it's yeah, something not, like that. They're not staying in a fucking one bedroom, efficient, you know, in L.A. You know. No, ironically, she married uh, uh, abnormally pink wiener boy, and she became like a lady or a duchess or whatever the fuck she is, princess or whatever. He fucking denies his family comes over to America, and now he's just a loser whose wife is a fucking is is making the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What happens when you marry? What happens when you marry a woman who makes more money than you in 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 America? Uh, usually divorce. That's usually what happens. Yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah. Marry marry royalty, and you're a woman. You get lifted up. You marry royalty, and you're a man, and you're just the royalty's bitch. That's just all there is to it. it yeah, but Somebody she needs him. the queen. He ain't the king. Yeah, but she needs him. Right? <laughs> He's the key to her being royalty. He goes away. She's just a not a work LA actress again. I'm gonna be brutally honest with you. I've never seen her in anything that I can remember, but she's pretty enough You're to where it's like, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna cry for her about her life before she married. You know, ginger ginger boy. There, I'm just not. Uh, you're, you're sorry. You're too pretty. I don't. Boo hoo! My tears are probably better saved for other people who like. You know, I don't know. Children dying of cancer right. or something. Right. It doesn't matter who's. Where she's getting money, or what her ties to the the royal family might be at this point, she's got that connection. Yeah, she's gorgeous. She's got Duchess on her resume. If she's got just an ounce of talent, then she can spin that into a long and fruitful career. They already make. They already got a deal with Netflix to be producers. Yeah. Well, also remember, somewhere Fergie is living high on the hog, and no one's thought about that bitch in twenty years at least. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like you are. Yeah, it's a big deal that they they stepped away from the royal family. Blah 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 blah. Well, let's see what this. Let's see what the tune that's being sung in ten, fifteen years. Fer- Fergie resurfaced for a minute with all the the Epstein stuff because of Prince Andrew. So that was that was her husband. Nah. Yeah, but even then, she wasn't all over. You know, yeah. her weight. Blah blah blah. Remember oh yeah, back in bullshit? the yeah the eighties and nineties. Nineties, yeah. yeah. We was- She's still royalty. She's still. Uh, it's something with, I don't know, Duchess Lady of some bullshit. She married somewhere. into generational wealth. Yes. Yeah, it, 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 what, what was the, the as as LeBron James said, I'm rich, meaning I'm set for life, and unless I make a lot of bad decisions, my kids are set for life. The Ford family's wealthy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like their great grandkids who haven't even been born yet are taken care of still. You know, that type of, that's, you can't fuck with that wealth. Well, that's 
Well, you have generations of people gnawing away at that stack of cash that have barely made a dent in it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, the, but if you compare them, though, to that family invented something that changed society around the world. LeBron James plays a game. Yeah, but there are, there are ways. fascism? There are ways to, 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 to move up because, I mean, you know, Michael Jordan is, even with his gambling habit, is worth quite a fucking bit, man. And LeBron seems to be following in the trail that a guy like Michael Jordan blazed. Yeah, LeBron got a $2 billion shoe contract at 18. LeBron's going to be fine. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah. That was 18. The, someone handed him a billion dollars. That was 15 fucking years ago. You know, so yeah, like that, that's he's made more money since then. That was his first billion. Unregimented. ChristopherMedia.net. If you're looking for COVID-19 testing, look into Quest, the lab that's processed over 25 million tests and counting. You can get the same test hospitals use without a doctor visit. Simply order online, select from drive through or at home options, and get results sent securely to your phone or computer. It's experience and accuracy you can trust from Quest, the largest medical testing lab in the country. So order today at questcovid19.com. That's questcovid19.com. At Jewelers Mutual, we're a little obsessed with jewelry. Obsessed like auctioneers with talking fast. 50, we're going to Pop stars with auto tune. And dentists with asking questions so, how did he propose? after they've put their you hands in your mouth. Like. Great. Yes, we've made jewelry our obsession for over 100 years. We love it so much, we named our kids Ruby, Amber, and Opal. Venti soy latte for Opal? At Jewelers Mutual, we insure jewelry and only jewelry, which is why people who are also obsessed with jewelry trust us with theirs. And now a game of Commercial Chicken, brought to you by Progressive, where we see how long Flo can go without talking about insurance. Ready? Go. So the the weather is just all over the place lately, right? One day it's hot, and the next day it's, uh, it's windy for a while. It's like, make up your mind already. Drivers who switch to Progressive can save big. Okay, you win. We can't help but save customers money. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue at Long Island Expressway in Masspath. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. ChristopherMedia.net. Unregimented. Well, let me ask you a question getting back to the Trump thing. Because I, 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 this is, to me, this is my biggest concern coming out of this whole clusterfuck of a debacle here going on post-election. Is that <clears throat> you already have people, just cynics, who are never going to buy that any election in this country is on the up and up. Period. End of story. Sure. Yeah. Fine. Just take them out of the equation. All right. Then you have the people who still have the bad taste in their mouth over 2,000. Take them out the equation. Now you got people, and I, I don't, I, I hesitate to say the, that, that it, all of them are the, the, the true believers and Kool Aid drinkers for Trump, but I am shocked at the amount of people who I never would have thought would, would, would die on that hill of this election was stolen from him that are still beating that drum and are still refusing to let it go. And the only thing I've, I've, I, I, I can say to them if they, if they're talking to me in person is what I said when Chris and I talked about this last week on the show, when you weren't here, which is unless you're going to present evidence in a court of law, that's going to stand up to muster in a court of law, shut the fuck up. I don't want to hear about it anymore. I'm over it. Where's your proof? Yeah. I, Okay. You've had over, what, three weeks to get this shit done? It still technically isn't done till when, when do they, when do they, like, oh, it's officially, to, it's the, the 12th the or 14th. Vote? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's 12th up. or 14th. I, I can't, it's the next either way. few weeks, yeah. Well, they had, yeah. they had the count in Milwaukee that the Trump campaign paid for out of, well, out of their pocket, really all the money that, that was donated to them. Paid for a three million dollar recount in Milwaukee, where Biden ended up gaining votes. <laughs> Not that Trump had any chance of overcoming the margin in Milwaukee, you know, with with any kind of recount. It would have to be 
an historic recount where they just found tens of thousands of votes in order to make a difference. But that's that's the key. That they're implying fraud, but they're not saying out loud what they think the actual fraud is. Yeah, you can tell what they're talking about by what the locations that these uh, these court cases have come down to. Right. So Michigan is was a definitely a battleground state, and even though. Biden won pretty healthily in Michigan. It was still contested, and it always came down to Wayne fucking County. And just like it comes down to Milwaukee, just like it comes down to as a uh, shit another another major city. But basically, what we're talking about is minorities. Wherever there's high concentration of black people, that's where they're contesting the vote because they're not contesting the actual process. They're contesting the fact that black people still have a vote that is equal to theirs. Well, one of the things I heard a a internet talking head, a YouTuber, I guess, I don't know what you'd call him besides that, uh, say that I was like, okay, now you're just showing your ignorance of the, the, the Detroit area, period. He was like, you're telling me that more black people came out to vote for Biden than voted for Obama? And I'm thinking, okay, I got a couple responses to that. One, this isn't the Detroit of 1980. They, a predominantly black city, Detroit, mm-hmm. has elected a white man mayor for the first time in our lives. And this is recently. This isn't fucking, like, when we were one and a half or something like that. This is something right. that I never thought I'd ever see I, again. When I, I never thought that would happen. You know. And he's got reelected. Yeah. Twi- I, yeah, he's been elected twice. So there, your narrative starts to fall apart that you're trying to push. Second of all, uh, fear and hatred inspires people to action a lot more than hope does. Because hope, you can get fucking, you can get fat on, you can get, you can sit on your ass and get fat on it, and, you know. And as long as you got that hope, oh hey, everything's going to be better. But this whole thing, this whole election was was basically it's Trump supporters. And white men versus everybody else. And these white men are all racist, and these Trump supporters are all racist, and they want to kill you. But yeah, but yes, exactly. If we're talking about the uh, black population in America, it became cops versus blacks, and Trump went with the cops. All right. And yeah, so of course you're going to have more black people coming out. Now, you know, I don't understand why that is so hard to, 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 to comprehend for these people. And I mean, I get it. I can't. I guess I can't blame an, someone who isn't intimately aware of the politics in Detroit. But once again, someone should have said to this guy, uh, "Yeah, you might want to stop banging on that. Uh, you know, you can't believe more black people would vote for Biden than would vote for Obama shit." Because, yeah, these. Yes, Detroit is a predominantly black city. And it's voted for a white mayor twice. And, I mean, you know, there's a line from The Wire. You know, when Tommy Carcetti's, uh, uh the guy who's running his campaign for him is a black guy. And Carcetti's running against two, you know, two other black guys. And he's like, so who are you going to vote for? And he goes, yeah, one of those brothers. He goes, oh, so you'll take my money? And he goes, yeah, the last white man I could vote for was Bobby Kennedy. He goes, see, that's the problem with you white people. We vote white all the time. It's y'all that don't vote black. <laughs> To a certain extent, and certain group, uh, groups of people in this country, that's true. So I think it's just them projecting their own racism onto a group of people because they think, well, I, I would never vote for a fucking black man if there's a white man in the race. So why would they vote for a, you know, you see what I'm saying? Like, they can't comprehend that shit. Right. That's just, that's, well, you're speaking out of ignorance and you're trying to attach something to push a narrative that just does not exist. Yeah, and, and you that don't That needs to be called that. out the area at all. I mean, I'm not saying that there's less black people in Wayne County, but there's definitely less people in Detroit itself. And Wayne County is still growing and it's pretty fucking diverse. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm waiting for the, the, the census numbers for this year to come out because I mean, what they, 10 years ago, we dipped under a quarter of a million people in Detroit and they were saying if at this rate, there'll be less than half a million people in Detroit by 2020. Yep. I want to see if that, that works out because I think we're going to, we, I think Detroit's going to fall short of half a million people by a lot. Like it ain't going to yeah. be just like barely squeaked by. 
Because there it, is a lot. Of, there right. is a lot of empty fucking swatches of, and I'm not talking the, the nice parts of Detroit, the parts that are getting built up, money put into them. I'm talking. You go to Brightmore. You know, that's a that's a West Side neighborhood. Mm-hmm. I used to live in Brightmore. It was packed houses. Like type type that you were so close to your neighbor, you could you know piss out your window and piss on their fucking window. But there's there's another big difference here, Rich. A census done under Obama versus a census done under Trump. But what do you mean, though? The, out, the census under Trump was easy. I took it on my phone. It took me sure. five minutes. Sure. The one with Obama, I still had to fill out like 10 goddamn pieces of paper and send it in. But just like voting, we're not great about being 100% compliant with the census as is. And you have uh, a you have a president that you fear now, right? That that is personally that people are in the media are telling you is personally coming for you. He's supporting police that are coming for you, or if you're, uh, it, you know, if your uh, family's from Mexico or you're here illegally, he's coming directly for you. These people aren't will, as willing to fill out the census. They're wanting to stay as under the radar as possible. So you're going to get less people coming actually filling out their census under Trump in inner cities than you will under Obama. I fucking guarantee it. I, you know, black people, probably not as much, but you go to Mexican village, guarantee you their numbers are going to be a fucking lot lower for 2020 than they were in 2010. That's a pretty big chunk. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, that's that's Southwest Detroit is basically known as Mexican <laughs> Southwest yes. Detroit is Corktown and, and, and Mexican Village. It's <laughs> so that's that's basically it right there. So, I mean, like, yeah. And and hey, you know, when you're when you're told constantly. We're going to throw you out. We're going to throw you out. We're going to we don't give a shit how long you've been here, blah, 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 blah. And then you start seeing it happen. Yeah, I understand not filling that shit out. You know, and then you have, but I mean, in 2010, you had, you know, the the usual doom criers of, oh, no, no, this is government keeping tabs on you. This is how they get you. This is how they do. Do you really want that? And it's like the areas that need the most people to fill out the shit so they can get some funding are the ones that are going to be most likely to buy into that bullshit and not fill it out. Exactly. And, and if you've watched Tom Hanks's appearance on Saturday Night Live's version of Black Jeopardy, you know that it ain't just black people yeah. that buy into that bullshit. <laughs> yeah, and, I'll and trust that like, iPhone. That's how they get you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you should be wanting everybody to be counted. You need not only your you and your family to be counted, but all those people that live in the, that inner city that you hate and never go to. You need them to be counted too, because their tax money is help keeping you afloat. That that city that you don't like still generates a shit ton of money. And not only that, but if they if if the city starts getting less and less money, how long until these people you don't like you're waking up to next 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 door to every day of your life because they're getting the fuck out of the city and going where the funding is. Okay? So, I mean, would you rather bitch about them because they're on the other side of Telegraph or 8 Mile, or do you want to bitch about them because they're right next door to you? Like, use their racism to get them to fill the shit out. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's let's use racism for something good for a change. <laughs> if at all possible. But I mean, I, they should incentivize it in some way. I mean, I, I do it because I understand the, the importance of it, and uh, you know, I want to I want to do my duty. But yeah, I mean, just something. I thought there was a. Legal I, I don't need anything, but if you just like made like a fucking coupon or like a free Starbucks or some shit, you'd get a lot more responses. Or if you made it like a jury summons and there's a bench worn out, if you didn't fill it out, I bet you'd see a lot yeah. of them filled out. Hey, I'm still for what is it, Australia that does. Uh, you have you have to vote. You have to register a vote, or else you're not in compliance with the law. Dude, we can't even get people to be on the same page with needing an ID to vote. You think that would go down here? That would no not, fucking would no, no fucking way. way. <laughs> but hey, I'm just saying. I want to confirm who you are. We can't we can't get on the same page with that. Yeah, yeah. Vote or it's vote or is it a bench warrant out? Oh 
God, no. Ne- that would never happen here. Well, it, uh, I don't know. I'm just, I mean, are we, are we all pretty much thinking that if, if Trump doesn't last until inaugurations because he is going to step down like we were talking about, try, hoping to get some sort of pardon on the federal level? But I mean, does that? How does that? How does that affect him in two thousand twenty four? I mean, I, look, I know he's got one more uh, term that he can, he can serve. I mean, makes it, gives him a little bit of sympathy to his base. That's what I was saying. Like, is he going to get out there and, and, and you know well, play Christ on the cross about this shit? Le- leading up to the his announcement that he was actually going to run and then him well i guess leading up to him getting the actual republican nomination when everybody realized oh this is not a joke there was a lot there was decades of trump nosing in on politics here and there and indicating that he was going to run as a democrat as a republican as an independent he'd he'd say he was going to run just to spoil shit and he got a lot of press out of all that shit and this was again i think that this latest attempt was just a, a another run at that it was like oh look at how much more press i can get the further through this process i go it just dumb. and then eventually he's the dog who actually catches the car it, so he can go back to that he can go back to that uh that gray area of like, I should run, I should get involved, you know, and it probably along with, you know, setting up a whole network of, uh, of, you know, his whole, whole family spouting off all this bullshit. They'll find ways to make money off of it alongside of him going, maybe I'll run. And then, you know, something will go wrong. The last thing it'll back out. Ah, uh, you know, uh, uh the Republicans, I don't, you know, I'm not with the Republicans on this or that issue. It isn't the right time, or I'm going to bide my time and and wait and start my own party or something like that. Say, or he runs in 2024 he, as the ultimate third party candidate, one who finally draws more than three percent of the vote. Or, or didn't Perot get like ten uh, percent or something like that? But what one third party candidate eight, who would finally 18%, fu- fuck yeah. the shit up? Well, what are the laws about? running for an office while you're being prosecuted for crimes. Because I'm thinking that he's going to be still tied up in courts over his tax issues out of New York. I don't know. Maybe that, maybe that helps him. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? It's another thing to put, in, put on the martyr plate. Well, I, I, if he runs third party, yeah, he, he might pull end up. It's 18% that, that Perot pulled of the, of the vote. But he might pull more than Perot, but he ain't going to get... He ain't gonna get the fucking the, the electoral votes needed. Eighteen percent. That eighteen percent. Let's just say if he did get eighteen percent, that would all have to come from the Republican Party, right? I think Perot was. Uh, I was gonna say not crazy, but I guess comparatively, and not get- <laughs> and it had Biden- a libertarian appeal. So he was actually polling from both sides. He got the. He didn't have to take that eighteen percent from all from the Republican Party. I think Trump does. No, the way I that America is divided right now. This time. Anything that anything that he gets to his part, his third party that we're theorizing here would all have to come from that fifty percent of the voting populace that are Republican. Well, I think he peeled off a few eyes. I think Biden peeled off a few of the independents to win, and. You know, depending on how he does, it's, it, we're, we don't live in a universe where Trump couldn't pull him back. Well, There's Biden, always going to be that thin margin of independence in between. Biden, Biden also did something that, you know, people, I don't think many people in his party or in Trump's party thought he was going to do, which is, you know, now whether you want to lay this at his feet and say it's because of Biden or because, you know, white males – Working class white males, blue collar white males were frustrated with Trump because Trump was saying, it's going to be the best. We're going to have all the jobs back in America. And you, you can say that all you want, but they're not here. OK, you haven't. I, I'm, I don't want to hear about 100,000 jobs you created somewhere in butt fuck Montana. That doesn't do any fucking good for the rest of us. The Rust Belt is still the Rust Belt. OK, like there's a lot of I know a lot of people who voted for Trump and completely disregard 
all I've disregarded all the bullshit that came with all the bullshit luggage, the dumb shit he says because well he's a businessman and maybe a businessman can bring business back to this country and he didn't do it. It's just like the health care plan. What is Trump's health care plan? <laughs> I'll wait. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I fucking thought. Okay, there's no, there's nothing there. It's all sizzle, no steak. And whether now, I, I don't think Biden pulled a lot of fucking working class white men over to his side, like through. Him, but I think people were just like, I'm not voting for Trump again. Mm-hmm. Not happening. I mean, you have a. Also, I, if Trump, if Trump just pulls five percent from the Republican voting base, that's a disaster for for Republicans. See, that's what I'm and saying. It wouldn't, it wouldn't even take that much. At that point, Trump is more playing the spoiler, and maybe I'm just way too cynical. I, at that point, I imagine some some major heavy hitting motherfuckers in the Republican Party call Trump and say, "We're having a meeting. This is not optional," and they sit him down and explain to him. Here's a blank check. How much to go away? Because you can't do this. You can't fucking use our party to instill yourself as the grand leader, get voted out, and now fuck us up for generations to come or for the next X amount of fucking, uh, uh, not generations, uh, for, for elections to come for the next X amount of election cycles because you're red ass because you didn't get fucking reelected. Mm-hmm. So either you bow out or we bow you out. And this that is, is an officer as it gets. That is the predominant theory. You know, I mean, I'm sure there, apparently, if we believe uh, some reports, there have been people that have tried to go to him like they went to Nixon and said, hey, look, you've lost support. You know, you're, you're doing nothing but hurting your own party at this point. Uh, you know, Nixon had, I think, pride in himself and in his party enough to understood understand what that means that means absolutely nothing to trump because he's just self-serving so the whole reason for all this kerfuffle over whether or not he's going to transition smoothly and and uh, regardless of what's in his power to do you know he's just going to throw a big fit and he's going to use that as leverage to say hey you know you could make this all go away right Give me a deal. Nobody can touch, not just a pardon, but some sort of deal that keeps New York State from coming after me as well. Keep my ass out of jail. I will go quietly. Yeah, that, that, was, a, that was my next step. If, if the- and I've, I'm, I've heard this a lot, but I don't fully believe it because I don't know what that looks like. Nobody's been able to fully explain to me. I understand what this means because I've watched enough TV shows. I know when the FBI says they want to cut a deal with you, what they're you know, they have certain powers, right? What power do we have over the prosecutors, the, the attorney general in New York? What power do, does anybody have over him to say, hey, you know, you can't touch this one person? Could the federal government take over the investigation and then go, eh, we're good? Is, is that possible? Uh, is that allowable? I, I don't think so. I think if you're uh, like local investigations, that seems to be the case. The, the feds can absolutely sue. But to, I don't know. I maybe I will. I will say that after I should have paid more attention to billions because I'm sure they went over. <clears throat> right. I, I will say that, that after after nine eleven, the feds have more so wanted to concentrate on terrorism and political corruption, whereas. In the 80s, 90s, it was a lot more, you know, drug trafficking, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, whatever, you know. Right. And um, you, but you also don't have, you don't have to take down the institution of the Attorney General's Office of New York, right? You just have to influence the key players. So there might be somebody over there that is looking for a cabinet position. They go, hey, look, hey, Biden said that you could be in his cabinet as long as you don't touch Trump after he's out of office. That might be the deal. There you go. Good old wheeling and dealing. Well, I mean, if there's a deal made with Trump and it's, look, you go quietly, you don't rock the boat, and you don't come back to rock the boat in X amount of years, and neither does your fucking, your progeny, then, 
You're you're a fool if you think Trump's going to fucking adhere to that. Yeah, yeah. I think the deal would just be don't rock the boat for the next two months, yeah. and then we'll have no say over what you do. But you at least won't have any official power anymore. Yeah, we'll, I don't. I don't play think a lot of there's. Golf. I, I I just he his ego has been fed and 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 his narcissism has been validated in a way that I I don't think he even ever thought was possible. The 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 power tripping and the high he has to get off of fucking being president has to be better than anything he's ever fucking done before. At least Outside of a bedroom, I guess. I don't know. You know, because apparently he does like to be pissed on. But I guess at least he's not R. Kelly and 14-year-old girls. Just walking in on him half naked during his fucking, what do you call it, uh, uh, beauty pageants and shit. Like, that's so much better. But anyways, <clears throat> I just, I don't know. I He's he's a wild card. I think that I think the Republicans Party, I, Republican Party, you sold your souls. You sold your souls for a win four years ago. And you want my sympathy? It's in the dictionary between shit and syphilis. That's and that's that's all the sympathy you're getting from me. You went into it with your eyes open, just like Democratic parties flirting with selling their souls to this so-called progressive wing that's not at all Democrats. They don't give a fuck about the party. They're just using you to get their foot in the door and then blow up everything. And if you let them do it, then you know. <laughs> We might have a very different fucking looking election cycle in two or three cycles if the if there these parties let themselves be split up and they, well, they can't rein everybody in. They didn't really have much of a choice on selling the soul. I I, I don't see it. I I still see the 2016 race as if Trump doesn't get the nomination, we have Hillary as president. I don't see anybody else being able to beat Hillary, no matter how much she was uh, disliked. Yeah, he was out, of, the guy. out of the Repub- out of the Republicans from I'm sorry, the Republicans from 2016. I agree yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was and the only so one who who do they have since then? The, the eye patch dude from Texas. Yeah, he ain't ready. He's not ready. He's but he seems to be one of the 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 people they're prepping. Yeah, he's a smart dude. I'll give him that. I don't. I definitely don't agree with all of his uh, everything he has to say, but he's smart and he's not completely crazy. <laughs> he's not a dick. No, I've I've seen enough. He can, he can be a bit of a dick. <laughs> he's got one I, eye. In ways that he's I got appreciate. A chip on his, <laughs> he's, but you'd be pissed he's, a little bit if you had one eye. I believe. He's I done, think that's the rule. If you get you lose one eye, you get to be kind of a dick. You lose <laughs> both, you get to be a total cocksucker. I bet you see wonder is an then ass. You get to be <laughs> Uncle Stink. You get to be Uncle Stink meaner from fucking yeah. Boondocks. <laughs> It's sunset with some old bullshit anyways. I didn't want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> you were popping that good shit a minute ago, Robert. Then you got kicked in your chest. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, look, I, I've, he, I, Dan, whatever is fucking, I can't remember his crazy yeah. last name. Crenshaw. Chernobyl, what the fuck? Crenshaw, there we go. That's, that's a lot easier. To, I thought it was like a weird Polish last name. Crenshaw, that's just, that's just a normal name. But anyways, I've seen him on Joe Rogan. Like, he seems like a good guy. Yeah, I don't agree with everything on his political shit, but he also doesn't seem like he he's not going to take it as, like, an insult to his ancestors if you disagree with him. You know what I'm saying? And those are the type of people that it's like, I, I can't, why are we putting these idiots into the, in the politics? These inflexible fucking jackasses. They're, they're, a, they're 40-year-old children. Well, They're forty-year-old toddlers. Aren't they a representation of us? Don't we choose them? It, which is we shit, white man. I didn't vote for we any of these I, fucking. The, the royal we. I, didn't vote I for know, I know. I'm fucking with you. I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> that's the problem, though. That's the problem. What, what? What did I say about Trump? All sizzle, no steak. That's what Americans like. Just, just, just shut. We will flock to see a movie to the tune of a couple hundred million based on a good two and a half minute trailer. That's how dumb we are. Like none of us, people keep going back to fucking men in black movies, even though they keep getting worse. Every single one. Like, like, really? How many times, how many children of the corn movies are there? 
You know what I'm saying? Like, we are not a very complicated people once you lump us all in together. It's like pretty nine, fucking dumb. I feel like nine Fast and Furiouses, and they're working on a tenth. Yeah, but I know, I know that Aaron likes those, so I was trying to stay away from the low-hanging fruit there. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I like, no, but he like knows, a like Madonna song. He, he knows they're not good. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, know, that's true. You, it, I don't think Madonna's a great singer. <laughs> I just think that it's a catchy tune. I think, I think it was... Uh, Shit! A couple of years ago, we were talking about it. You were talking about how you know you and the kids go see those movies, Fast and Furious movies, and I was like, "Yeah, I've only seen Tokyo Drift, but everyone describes them as the, the what the cars do in those movies are car fu. The cars are kung fu fighting, and oh there is a limit. Like I tried to watch. I got halfway through that Hobbs and Shaw movie, and I was just like, I cannot. It's <laughs> it's just too." ridiculous like you've got to give me something other than these guys are just really good at driving cars and that's why they can do all this shit well i mean and usually i'll watch anything jordana brewster's in but even she couldn't fucking make me sit down and watch one of those movies so i i don't know what they could do to get me in there yeah. and the only reason i've seen tokyo drift twice is because my ex-wife was in love with the hillbilly with the southern accent that was the, the lead in that movie that yeah, I don't well, think is in any of the other Fast and Furious movies. <laughs> no, so Tokyo Drift, they, that was when they thought it was going to be more an, an, an anthology style series like, where. Yeah. Like a universe? You know, yeah, there'd be a, yeah, a Fast and Furious universe and they could go you know, all over the world with this shit. But then they realized the real draw was, was muscled dudes like talking about family. So <laughs> I. But. Tokyo Drift gets a lot of uh, gets a lot of shit for being a bad movie. I mean, they're all bad movies. They're all really bad movies. It's the Phantom Menace of the Fast and Furious universe. Yeah, Tokyo Drift is really fun. I really enjoy that one. I, I was just like, does this count as foreplay? Yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you are you getting moist now that you're seeing your little redneck boy? Okay, good. <laughs> So I can I can skip all that shit and just we can get right to the good stuff. Yeah. Okay. Are you warmed up? <laughs> hey, you want to put some porn in tonight? Get a little freaky, honey? No, I, I rented fa- uh, Tokyo Drift. God damn it. <laughs> Unregimented. ChristopherMedia.net. If I learned one thing from this great game of baseball, it's that she'll humble you. You think you've got it figured out, you check the standings, and you're in last place again. I'm Eric Rubino, fantasy baseball GM, and I can put my team in position to win every single time, but I can't play the games, people. At least Progressive's Name Your Price tool has options based on my budget. It never lets me down, unlike my pitching staff. Amateurs! Get options based on your budget with Progressive, even if you're not a legend in your own mind. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspath. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. You heard that safe drivers get rewarded with Snapshot from Progressive, so you went online to check it out. But then you saw an ad for a vintage baseball cap, and now you find yourself checking the stats of that team's second baseman in 97, wondering why his stolen base total dropped after his rookie season. Wonder how much his rookie card is worth. Yes, they said it was easy to save money with Snapshot from Progressive, but they forgot about the rest of the Internet. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Snapshot not available in California, North Carolina, or from all agents. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspath. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. ChristopherMedia.net Unregimented Oh, shit. Oh, speaking of speaking of people starring in, in, in bad movies, uh, Gail, is it, have we, did we ever do, is it Godot or Godot? 
because it looks like Godot, but I believe it's Godot. Godot. Who are we talking about? Ga- I know uh, she who plays Wonder Woman. Oh, uh, Gal. In that, in that case, it's Gal Gadot. It is Gadot. Okay. Yes. Oh, there's a there's an entertainer that works with uh, Pendulet. His name's uh, Michael Godot, and it's same spelling. But yeah, I guess it just depends on on who you ask. Well, you know, apparently, <clears throat> because she's the new hotness, you know, in, in, in Hollywood as far as, like, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, middle- didn't she stumble into some kind of uh, Twitter turd pile? Well, that's what I was about to say. She was cast as Cleopatra in some upcoming movie. Oh, people, that's what it was, yeah. <laughs> people on Twitter started going nuts saying it's a hate crime. She's not Egyptian. Egyptians. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. <laughs> Israel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> wait, just because she's not a stereotypical looking Middle Eastern person, the bitch was born in Israel. Yeah. She's an Israeli citizen. She served two years in the Israeli army. <laughs> and the only hate crime, if you get her out of this movie, is the hate against my dick from not being able to see her scantily clad. <laughs> That's oh, my God, crime. her as Cleopatra? Well, That's if you want to be historically accurate, she should play a slave based on where she was born. <laughs> She should play one of the slaves. Is that what we're getting at Twitter? There's going to there's gonna be a private viewing for that movie in my house, if you know what I mean. <laughs> no, first of all, we've retconned ancient history. Um, only white American males have ever enslaved anybody now, according to people. The, the Israelites weren't slaves. They were indentured oh. servants. It's different. Yeah. Don't ask how. Don't ask questions. Just consume bullshit and wait for more bullshit to arrive. It's because we're going to retcon history now because somebody listening to a Rage Against the Machine song figured out those who control the past right. do control the future. Yeah, and serfs, yeah. Ser- serfs aren't slaves either, right? Because they get paid a little bit. You, Oh, sure. I, so I can just go over to that guy's uh, castle and work for Oh, no, we'll kill you. That, oh, okay. So, I, oh, so they, I'm basically a slave. It, and, and, the, and the white guys didn't buy the slaves from African slave traders? I, yes. That, we, let, we left that part out? It's one of my favorite Patrice O'Neill bits. He goes, I used to sit there and argue that white people came to Africa, the continent of Africa, and started stealing black people. Then I realized... Once I went to Africa, I ain't getting my black ass off the boat and running through the fucking w- the jungle and dealing with shit I don't know. So what makes you think a bunch of fucking rich white boys got off a boat and was like, so that's where they're at? They're over there? Okay, we're going to go. We're going to go capture them. No, 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 no. They ain't going in that jungle. They don't know that area. On top of that, tribal warfare, it's kind of like, isn't it well known that you kill the men, fuck the women? And you kill the children if they're of a certain age, and th- those that you keep, you assimilate either as slaves or lesser than into your tribe. I mean, this is nothing new. This shit still happens to, in this day and age. We still have slaves in, the, in this world. It's it's it, it, it's not like it went away. It's just not it's just not America doing it anymore. Well, the slavery we have is a little bit different, but that's that's a whole nother that's a whole nother story. And it <laughs> depends on your outlook on life. <laughs> But I, yeah. So I, I don't. I just thought it was funny, and then I hear that you know they're going after her, and I'm like, she's Israeli. She's okay. All right, wonderful. I get it. And then it hit me. Why are you mad at her? Yeah. Why don't you get mad at the people that casted her? Why is she the target of this anger and hatred? Because she, she, yeah, she should be the one that knows better. She's a fucking she actress. She just took a job. <laughs> Yes. I mean, it, like, it, it's that's, hi, I'm here for a job. What are you looking for? To act. We have a role for you. Thank you. You're going to get mad at the person for working at Burger King because it's the only job they could fucking get her? You know, like, well, you, you're just, you're pushing death here and blah, 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 blah. And, well, th- there's been a, a few a few recent controversies in this same line of thinking um, one of the more recent ones was Sia, the singer who I guess is producing a film that, uh, I hope I'm getting this right, I think she was casting somebody as autistic. The, the, the character in the story is autistic, and she cast somebody who, uh, who wasn't 
autistic for that role. Yeah, and, and didn't Brian Cranston get some shit a few years ago for playing disabled and he wasn't disabled? Do you know why on that show in the 80s, Life Goes On, the guy, the, the guy who played Corky in that show, who, who actually has Down syndrome, why he was a pretty in-demand actor anytime they needed someone who, to play with someone with Down syndrome? One, he, was, he had it, but he's very high-functioning. And two, he's probably one of the handful of actors who have Down syndrome who could still do the job. You take a nonverbal autistic person, yeah, you're going to get an authentic performance, but it ain't going to be a performance. And have you ever tried to fucking give directions to, to someone who's nonverbally autistic? Good luck. Well, right. And, and at what point does it tip over into exploiting the person? It, you know, if you there is, there is that. How do you not tip over into gummo territory? Oh, gummo! Oh my god! You don't tape bacon to a fucking bathtub. <laughs> you're eating spaghetti in, <laughs> or, or to a wall of a bathtub. You're eating spaghetti, and that's how you don't get into gummo territory. <laughs> and Jesus Christ, if your kids are killing cats, just kill your kids. You're raising serial killers, okay? Trust me, no one's gonna miss them. Don't kill your kids. <laughs> Have someone else. Go. No, no. <laughs> PSA. <laughs> that whole movie was just like the nightmare of middle America. I was like, oh, so God. This is from, there was a petition that launched online. I just found this. And the person who initiated this petition says on, on the page, as an autistic individual, I am asking that this film is canceled. Okay, I guess you can't, doesn't even have the option of recasting. You just have to, nope, yeah. you had a bad idea. You can't make your art. Uh, she goes on to say, it is extremely offensive to myself and other autistic invis- individuals. Then don't go see it. How about that? Well, right. What Again, happened to not, that one? Not knowing anything about how this individual is represented in this piece because it's not been made, uh, Sia has shown no remorse for her inaccurate and hurtful betrayal of the community. She's made no portrayal. She hasn't made the piece yet. I, yeah. th- this is like a convergence of two things that really bug me. <laughs> You're reacting to something that you haven't seen yet, reacting to a piece of art that you don't even know what it is yet. And also this, the, the reporting on movies and production of, of movie and TV has become such that you know, we're, we're getting either excited or upset about things that are still like in concept phase that may never Man, see the light of day. What are you mad at? It doesn't even exist yet. <laughs> yes. I'm mad that something might exist that I will disagree with. Well, I'm so, did I miss something? Did, did, did we add an amendment to the Constitution that says you now have the right to never be offended in this country, to never disagree with anybody in this country? Oh, it's, it's because to me, it's like you're offended, you disagree with the casting, don't go see the fucking movie. Yeah. I'm sure. That's I know. Let's be honest here. The bitch who probably ain't making something that's going to make as much money as Titanic. Okay, it's probably going to be a real easy movie not to see if you don't want to see it. She also says in here, this film will not have a major impact on history. Canceling it will express that intolerance to neurodivergence is unacceptable in today's society. Oh, my God. But she, isn't it, isn't she saying that, isn't she trying to normalize neurodivergence? I guess normalizes it. Is, is actually a, a bad way to phrase that. She's trying to bring neurodivergent people into regular entertainment by casting this individual in her movie. At the, I mean, this character, I should say. She's trying to make it okay to talk about it. Right. Dumb shit. Shia and, and her associates have additional avenues for funds. They will survive even if no money is made from this film. Oh, fuck them. They're rich enough anyway. So they shouldn't even get to make their their art because there's a chance that it might offend me or others. God, I don't miss being a musician. That's like, fucking fascist. If, if that's the attitude that's out there now in the artistic community, I do not miss being a part of it. Well, look, this is this is one crazy person with a with a dumb opinion. Although, is the movie getting I, I don't made? Know. Uh, the, yes, I, the, the movie is not. I don't. You don't cancel a movie with a petition. <laughs> so they are still making right? the movie. Not actionable. 
you might illustrate that it's an unpopular enough idea that your financial backers might uh, have other thoughts, but I don't know. I'm imagining Sia is hopefully she's independently wealthy enough that she's financing this on her own and can make whatever fucking crazy movie she wants to. And you can then judge her on that art that she makes, not that the art that she said that she was possibly going to make. Out of these three petitions... List from most signatures to least signatures. Uh-huh. Remake season eight of Game of Thrones. Okay. <laughs> Redo the Disney sequels. How's that going? Boycott Sia's movie that we don't even know the name of. Which one do you... Because I know who's in number three, and it's a, by a long shot. Okay? Like, most people don't even know who the fuck Sia is, unless you are into that type of music or... You're, you follow the music industry. And, yeah, she's got a lot of money because she's done a lot of writing and producing. That's where the money's at these days. Oh, yeah. She's got the money to do it. But still, it's like, how many people could even pick her out of a lineup of one? Especially take her fucking weird-ass haircut away from her. It's the, it's the chick who looks like a lamp. You know, the, you know what I know the most about her? Is that uh, Shia La, LaBeoufu and some girl of questionable age was in a video dancing together uh, for one of her songs and people were fucking having shit fits because well i mean it is shia labeouf and he is kind of a weird guy and it's like that girl's like nine and they're like damn near dirty dancing what yeah there was some video where like they were he was in a cage with like a nine ten year old girl who was supposed to be like representative of sia and this was all types of artsy fartsy and it was too much artsy and not enough fartsy and it just came off as like this is kind of pedoish creepy shit that's all I know, really know about her, and uh, and her interview on Howard Stern that, that I listened to one day, and that's when I was like, oh, she, that's where she's she's a writer and producer. That's okay. She's a mover and shaker behind the scenes, like that Scott Storage guy or whatever the fuck his name is. That's that's what one of ten producers that have basically shaped the sound of popular music and in, in in Western culture for the last fifteen years. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a small handful, and they all have worked oh, yeah. together and write together and produce together. So I just realized we need to go back and cancel Bjork now. She played a blind woman. Oh, yeah, she's not blind. Fucking nope. that's it for Selma songs. The album, that album's got to go. That movie's got to go. First of all, wasn't it about Dancer in the Dark, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, hold on a sec. Because... Do you know who, off the top of your head, who, who directed it? Oh, yeah, that is. Oh. That's Lars von Trier. He don't yes. give a fuck. You ain't yeah. canceling <laughs> him. <laughs> he don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, you see my shit? <laughs> there's, uh, he I don't really he, take people's feelings into account when I make art. <laughs> there's, there's literally a movie called Antichrist where Charlotte Gainsborough takes a brick to William Defoe's dick beats his dick and then masturbates him till he comes blood and Ooh. yes it was a stunt dick but it's a real <laughs> dick and it's like you think this guy who filmed that and put that out that gives a fuck what you think about him <laughs> 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 and that's not even like that's nymphomaniac part one and two was basically a porn if you ever see the uncut shit I haven't like, seen, yeah. So when she gets a train run on her, there's more black dick being thrown into her than fucking swinging around in an NBA locker room. And I mean, it is just like, I, did did I go to Pornhub? I thought this was YouTube. Or not YouTube, but uh, uh, Netflix. Because they had the uncensored one on for a while, and I was like, this is straight up porn. Like, Seriously. So he don't, yeah, he ain't, he, he, and Bjork, she, where's she from, Iceland? She's probably got more, enough money to buy that country over three times. She don't give a fuck anymore either. I mean, we're, we're heading for like, you can't, we're, we're heading for, you can't play gay if you're not straight. We're, 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 that's what, a couple of years away? The way all this shit's heading? People yeah, so mad. I was trying Are to find. Are we going to have to cancer Oscar Nunez? We have to cancel uh, Eric McCormick. I don't know how. I'm trying to figure out how I can Google this, but Kristen Stewart actually spoke about this uh, at some point. Like Hillary Swank, is that going to be it for her? Yeah, but wait, I've, I've actually heard 
and read opinion pieces about her turn and boys don't cry and the defenders of it say Brandon and Tina never went through transitioning. So the movie is technically right because the real Brandon and Tina was just was stuffing and strapping, strapping, you know, the tits down and, and stuffing something in the, in the, in, in the pants. So I found it. Sorry. Okay. So this is from a recent interview in Variety. So I don't think this is not the first time this has come up, but they do address this issue. Interviewer asked, so there are a lot of people who feel it's important that gay actors play gay characters. So many, so after so many years of that not being the case, what's your stance on that? Uh, she says, I think, it's, I think about this all the time. Being somebody who has had, had so much access to work, I've just lived with such a cr- creative abundance. All right, so she blows herself up a little bit. Uh, what's your opinion on it? I would never want to tell a story that really should be told by somebody who's lived that experience. Oh, what experience? Oh, uh, I guess being raised straight, realizing that you're gay later. That's what she's talking about. Uh, well, then, okay, then. Then gay can't play straight. There's no more gay people playing straight. If that's the standard, then, then Kevin Spacey, well, he's he's been done for other reasons. But, you know, every time you can't play a straight guy. Right, but the can't play McKenzie, a straight girl if you're gay. What's that? Mc, is it Mackenzie Davis? I think is in this movie with her, and she's playing her girlfriend in this movie, and she's not gay in real life. No, I'm sorry. I thought she was going to address this, but she's just talking around it. Really, <laughs> I don't have a sure shot answer for that. So at one point, she did say she was more defiant about this. I think she got a lot of blowback for for it. I, 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 I'm starting to wonder if there's going to be a backlash to this like there was with the, you know, the, 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 the moral self-righteousness that we experienced as a country after Reagan was voted into to office and we had the satanic panic in the 80s and the PMRC and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then finally people just fucking, like in the 90s, sometime about in the mid-90s, just snap back at it and said, this is fucking ridiculous. Shut the fuck up. We're not doing this shit. But see, that was coming from conservative evangelicals. And the country was getting more and more liberal in spite of, you know, the, 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 the Reagan bullshit of the 80s. But I just, I, there has to be, a, there has to be an artistic backlash Against this shit at some point. Yeah, because we've come to the other side of the horseshoe, right? Well, there, there has to be a, a, a line that you draw somewhere, right? Because what you're talking about is a, you're talking about a job that's about pretending to be something that you're not. Right? That's the whole job. Now, you have to have a certain look so that people are convinced that you're that person that you're representing. You know, there's de- definitely, you, you can't just play a black guy to hire to uh you can't just hire a black guy to play a white person but well i guess you could ultimately if you're lars von trier <laughs> you could do whatever the or, fuck you want or, or, <laughs> or whoever directed uh uh soul uh, man n- no you went back too far god damn it tropic thunder yeah there you go <laughs> but soul man so, also worked but but anyways, so you have a job that's about pretending to be somebody else, right? But you're saying that there has to be a certain amount of representation already. Outside of just visual identifiers that might throw the audience, there are sections of that audience that are saying, no, we have to know that that person is actually this, right? We have to know that they are representing a sexual orientation that they actually believe in and then... What like where else do you, where where does that line get drawn that they have to have the same religious beliefs? You know, can you not have can you have a not an atheist portray a Christian? Is that yeah. poor yeah. representation? Yeah. To what end is I believe what you're saying? Oh, right. It, and, that's, and if that's you been, if you keep if you keep about. doing that, if you keep if you do the slippery slope argument on that, then you don't have well. It really limits the, the amount, the types of characters that people can write, right? I guess we got to take Jamie like, Foxx's Oscar, I, not blind. I, I, 
I have to you're right, I have to write a not only write a character, but I have to think about who's going to be able to play this character without without being uh, accused of not representing some faction or another. Tom Hanks, not really mentally See, challenged. And, and that right. And he, he that Oscar it, it's a great it's a great Ooh. mathematical equation for creating art, right? That's how all great art is made. They sit down and they figure out what does everybody want? Hey everybody. What do you guys like in paintings? Like horses or still lice? Okay, I'll just paint a still life on the horse's back. Charlie's Theron, not a serial killer. Give me your Oscar back. Yeah, we could do this, this all. It, this is this is why this is why I'm I'm like I don't see gatekeeping as this big horrible sin that most people do or or seem to because these people are locusts. They they they, they force their way into into some group or or hobby or whatever. And they go, hey, we love everything about it, except for everything has to change. And by the way, it just so happens everything has to change to where I alone am comfortable. And I feel I'm being represented. Regardless of how silly the request is, you have to fulfill it or else you're an istophobe and we'll blow your shit up. And then so you chase off the fucking people who are actually, I don't know, creative and bringing something to the table besides bitching and and, and, and crying about shit. And then you leave these uncreative fucking termites to eat from the inside out, the hobby, the scene, whatever. And instead of doing what an intelligent person with talent would do, which is if you don't see what you want in the hobby, make it yourself. Yeah, absolutely, Rich. If this, if this young woman, instead of trying to get people to sign her petition to cancel somebody else's piece of art, if she just said, hey, everybody's talking about this SIA project. I don't think she's doing it right. Here's how I would do it. Let's get together some money, and I'll show you what I could do, how, how I think this should be represented. Or maybe even if I'm not the actor, if you've got the good ideas, then fucking direct it. Find the right autistic actor. Cast that part. Write that part. Write the representation. Create the art as the response to the art that you don't like. The only, re- the, the only answer to any of this is more art. Right? You don't, nothing should be canceled. You don't like it, or even if you think it's harmful, then just create more good art to drown it out because you're never going to get rid of all the things that, that are trying to harm people in this world. All you can do is your own piece and put as much good out there as you can. But this isn't putting good out into the world. This is just shitting on somebody else's thing. That shark didn't really eat those people. I want all the Jaws Oscars rescinded. <laughs> well, I mean, I, it's, it's, it's not just... Well, not, it's, there, there's, it's not there's just hungry case. sharks out there. That's the issue, Chris. <laughs> the, the, there were the, hungry the pro- sharks out there that weren't getting the work. The, the problem is, is that, and I think we all understand what the issue is, is that just because if someone if someone comes into a to a fandom or gets you know hears about a movie being made and they cast someone who's you know not autistic or whatever it's easier to bitch and complain and tear it down than it is to build anything building takes time tearing down takes seconds sure. yeah <clears throat> you know what i'm saying i mean it, it, it's just the way it is and we are such a soft society anymore I mean, all around, and I get, I'm including me in this shit too. I'm marshmallow fucking soft compared to my great grandfather and our great grand and their great grandfathers and grandparents and shit. I mean, you know, they lived to the ripe old age of died at childbirth. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they had ten kids because they knew three of them were gonna fucking die. It was just they dealt with life as it is, and they didn't cry about well, the world isn't the way I think it should be. Well, of course it's not, because the world don't give a fuck, and it's going to keep spinning whether you're here or not. And it, we just, it, it's too many fucking voices being amplified, and you're not saying anything. You're not doing anything. You're not bringing anything to the conversation. Like you said, if she put the movie out, and the movie was a huge piece of shit that misrepresented autistic people, I would be more than willing to sit down and read a, a, a critiques of that. Well, and the, why that is? Well, the market would also the market would 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 make its decision. 
it, the word would get out and it would make 10 bucks. But, you know, but it, I, what, I, what, I'm, what I'm seeing now is that, you know, you might have been a little bit too young, Chris, but, I mean, you know, I saw it in the theater, Rain Man. And yep. there was literally people walking out of the theater, grown-ass adults going, I'd never heard of autism before. I was just like that doctor. You say he's art- artistic? No, he's autistic. I don't know what that is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it actually shined a light on a corner of humanity that was dirty little secrets and put away in fucking in, in, in institutions and locked up and treated like less than. Yet, I've read scathing critiques of that fucking movie sure. about how it misrepresented this and they didn't use true autistic people, which is bullshit because in the scene when they go to the fucking, when, when Tom Cruise goes to pick him up and, and find out he's his brother and takes him from the home, there were fucking genuine autistic people as extras. And they were crit- and just like Todd Browning when he made Freaks in the 30s was criticized for using real circus freaks. Yeah. That director, I think it was Barry Levinson, was, was critiqued for using real autistic and, and institutionalized people as extras, specifically the nonverbal autistic people. Why? Because you don't know what the fuck's going on in their head. They can't express themselves. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it, I'm not saying no, that I, he did take advantage of them, but the, the, capa- the ability for abuse to happen is there. And it, to me, if I was a guardian of someone with, with severe, not, and they were nonverbal, and they were severely autistic, almost like locked-in autistic, I would be leery about someone coming around promising, oh, we want to put him in a movie. What do you want him to do? He's not a. He's not here to 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 to, to be a fucking entertainment center for y'all, and you're not going to exploit him. You know what I'm saying? Like, sorry, not on my watch. I would want to know. I would be firsthand. So I mean, like, I, you can't win with these types. So don't play the game. And by the way, they have no skin in the game. They bring nothing to the table. They're hardly ever creative. They hardly ever add anything. They just chew up, destroy, and spit out. And that's it. So why are we bothering with them? I think there needs to be more people to go, shut the fuck up and let creative people be creative. Like you said, Aaron, I'm with you in lockstep on this one. You're criticizing something that doesn't even exist yet. It's in the fucking thought stages at this point. What are you mad at? There's not even been fucking one foot of film filmed about this fucking shit. They're still in the casting process. They're, they're in pre-production, and you're throwing shit fits. You're mad at it's an idea. It's not like they're filming... Not like they're filming Mein Kampf and trying to make Hitler the good guy, and we know that from the outset. You know what I'm saying? Like, Would that be a Lars von Trier movie? Yeah, actually, <laughs> that's why he was banned from Cannes for a couple of fucking years. <laughs> I, I think I think he was trying to be funny, and he just his, his sense of humor doesn't line up with everybody else's. Because I, if I remember correctly. He, 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 like, now I kind of understand where Hitler was coming from on a, on, on a certain subject. People were like, oh, shit, get him out of here. <laughs> Bill, of course, Bill Hicks does it, and he goes, Hitler had the right idea. He was just an underachiever. Kill them all, Uncle Adolf. <laughs> Kill them all. <laughs> do you, do you want to hear Sia's response to this? Sure. Says, the movie is both a love letter to caregivers and to the autism community. I have my own unique view of the community and felt it is un- underrepresented, underrepresented and compelled to make it. And she, she was compelled to make it. If that makes me a shit, I'm a shit. But my intentions are awesome. Well, I can't say I've ever heard any music of hers that I really like, but go ahead. You go, girl. Yes, queen. <laughs> Let them know. <laughs> exactly. No apology because none is needed. No fake fucking. No 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 pandering. No kowtowing. No sucking up and boot kissing and knee bending because none is needed. She's done nothing wrong. She's, She's trying from to England, make right? fucking movie. I don't. I don't, I don't tell you. I'm yeah, so, I really don't know. Because that to me that doesn't sound like a United States person. That sounds like an English person telling you to tell people to fuck off. If she was, she's lost her accent from the. She's Australian, so okay. See, but I that doesn't mean shit. You can I don't Still, know. I, 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 mean, didn't, maybe, I didn't detect an amid, that didn't seem like an American response because Americans will do everything you just said. You know. Well, the, yeah, you, you yeah. Even if you even if you feel you've done nothing wrong, you got to get the PR department out to write the pre-approved apology and yeah. You know, I'm going to I'm going to research on my own time more into this, and 
understand the community because everything's a community yeah. now. And it, even if you did stick with your original horrible decision, you would ha- make some sort of accommodation like, well, we brought some specialists on to consult on this and yeah. make sure that everything's above board. And, and We're giving three cents yeah. of every dollar made to this movie, to this charity, blank, blah, blah, yeah. It, she was just like, hey, you don't like it, whatever, then I'm an asshole. Unregimented. ChristopherMedia.net You heard that safe drivers get rewarded with Snapshot from Progressive, so you went online to check it out. But then you saw an ad for a vintage baseball cap, and now you find yourself checking the stats of that team's second baseman in 97, wondering why his stolen base total dropped after his rookie season. Wonder how much his rookie card is worth. Yes, they said it was easy to save money with Snapshot from Progressive, but they forgot about the rest of the Internet. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Snapshot not available in California, North Carolina, or from all agents. As much as life has changed over the last year, you're still pretty busy. So consider convenient COVID-19 testing from Quest. Get the same tests hospitals use without a doctor visit. Simply order online, select from drive through or at-home options, and get results sent securely to your phone or computer. It's a great fit for your busy life. With over 25 million COVID-19 tests processed, you can count on Quest. So order your test today at questcovid19.com. Me, 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 but also you. The Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film, Powder Donut. <clears throat> okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the name and price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The name your price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in MassPath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in MassPath. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. ChristopherMedia.net Unregimented Well, I, there's, you know, I agree with, uh, there's, there's another podcast that one, one, of the, one of the hosts says, too many people have a voice now. Like, and, and they, they don't use it for anything but bullshit. And, I, and I'm, I'm kind, of, kind of with him because everybody now thinks there's some sort of expert on anything they critique. And you, for the most part, you're not. I, I, you're what, just you're you're giving an opinion. Your opinion has weight as much as I feel it, it has value. Your opinion can mean a lot to you, but it doesn't mean a lot to anybody else, and it doesn't have to either. I'm I, I was been with that sentiment, but I'm kind of amending it to. I think we're giving more like the wrong people a voice. Like people can have a voice. We're just we're highlighting the wrong idiots. We're shining the flashlight in the wrong corners, so to speak. Well, I mean, like earlier this year, Bill and Ted three come out, right? It's Bill and Ted, guys. I'm assuming y'all have seen the first two at least. Yes. Okay. Oh well, yeah. The critiques coming from the 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 woke <laughs> crowd was so ridiculous that I was like, is this satire that I'm just not getting? Because all the criti- all the, the, the biggest criticism I heard from the, the woke crowd was, in the horrible, horrible year of 2020, you're going to release something this frivolous and lighthearted? Really? You're trying to make people forget about we're the allowed- literal Nazi in office? We're not allowed to have fun? And the world-ending plague that he's allowing to destroy this country? Did you just turn Bill and Ted about fucking Trump? You did. You're an idiot. Fuck off. It's Bill and Ted. You don't go to Bill and Ted <laughs> for biting social commentary. Okay? What? Yeah. Even Yes, I get it. Even though the first two had fucking George Carlin in them. He's dead. And he, by the way, he wasn't angry George Carlin in those movies. He was, get the bills paid George Carlin in those movies. <laughs> yeah, he's like... Where's my mark and what do I need to say? I I had a cocaine problem. Like, seriously. I was like, you've got to be bullshitting me. This has to be a joke. Speaking of cocaine problem, Eric Clapton's in the news. And 
how did we not cancel this asshole 40 years ago? Oh, when, oh, when, his, am I, oh did, his, did his, his Nazi rant come up? That's been on, I had, been recorded yes. for like 40 years. I had never heard this. I, were you aware of this at all, Rich? So I, well, this was 1976. He's on stage somewhere in England. And I actually have the quote that he says here. Um, Do we have any foreigners in the audience tonight? If so, please put your hands up. So where are you? Well, wherever you are, I think you should all just leave. Not just leave the hall, leave our country. I don't want you here, in the room or in my country. Listen to me, man. I think we should send them all back. Stop Britain from becoming a black colony. Get the foreigners out. Get the wogs out. Get the coons out. Keep Britain white. The black, the black wogs and coons and Arabs and fucking Jamaicans don't belong here, and we don't want them here. Okay. This is England. This is a white country. We don't want any black wogs and coons living here. We need to make clear to them they are not welcome. England is for white people, man. This is Great Britain, a white country. What has happened to us, for fuck's sake? The first thing I'm going to take from that is I, I don't know what a, a wog is a wife or girlfriend of athlete. That's what they call them, wogs or wags. So uh, is, if that's, if that's, a, if that's a, a racial race. slur, yeah. it's a new one to me. It's British, so race. I, it's British racism. Yeah, I, I can just add one yes. to my repertoire for when I'm driving now. Okay. I yeah, fucking it, wog, get out of my way. <laughs> it's just, it's black people, right? Is that what it is? I thought it was just a black thing. So, yeah, when he says the blacks, the coons, the wog, it, I, okay. he's just. Uh, now, granted, because I've read his autobiography, uh, it's mentioned in there. It's not verbatim quoted like you quoted. Okay. Uh, he he does address it. He brings it up as, yeah, I was a fucking useless piece of shit that was drunk and coked out of my mind through most of the 70s. Well, I was going to say, 76, wasn't that at the height or, shall we say, the low of his? his yeah, and it's, there's, kind of a, there's kind of an interesting side story to it that... <sighs> wasn't, he, wasn't that when he, him and Heroin were really good friends in the mid seventies? I mean, Heroin, Coke, yeah, he was speedballing and and drinking like you know terminally ill Irishman. I'm not yeah. saying we excuses any of this. No, but. no, 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 no. I'm just saying this is what he said. He said that he you know anytime he hears that what he said quoted back or he hears a recording of it, he just wants to crawl under a rock and die. I don't know. Now, is he saying that because he because he has to? I don't know. I'm not in a man's heart. Um, right. I do know that Eric Clapton, through his entire career, has pretty much been accepted by a lot of the old, the old guard black blues artists. I mean, if he was like, yeah, he's got a lot black he, if he really hated black people, I don't think he'd have been spending time with these people. But then at the same time, why would that shit come out of your mouth? Now, what, what, a, a, a story that, because <clears throat> how I originally heard about this story was through Stevie Ray Vaughan's, the book about Stevie Ray Vaughan that came out in the 90s, which was okay. when Clapton first met him, Stevie Ray, Clapton had just gotten sober for like three, four years. He was relatively you know, new to being clean. And he ran into Stevie Ray Vaughan on tour at a bar. And Stevie Ray Vaughan was just openly fucking dumping Coke into a glass of whiskey and just killing it at the bar. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the most rock star shit I've ever heard, dude. <laughs> wow. And, and Eric Clapton was like, Hey, you want really? to be friends? He's like, he goes, yeah, it's my morning pick me up. I, I, you know, I got to put a gram in a glass of whiskey and slam it or else I can't even function. Jesus. He's like, he goes, wow. Yeah, sometimes you got to kind of go through that, don't you? He goes, and you end up saying some and doing some dumb shit. It was just, he goes, I, he goes, I, I just want you to know if you if you feel like you need help, I'm here for you. Just, I just hope you do it before you say or do something that really comes back to bite you in the ass. And then, ironically, like a year later, Stevie Ray Vaughan released a live album where he was coked and drunk out of his mind and went on this rant at the end of one of his songs about. Like Africa and apartheid, that made no sense. Like his heart was in the right place, but if you've ever been locked in a bathroom with someone doing coke at three in the morning, you're not yeah. solving the world's problems. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're just you're rambling, you know, and that's and what he was doing. And it, 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 when and then no, you know, no, Rich, you solved all the world's problems in that bathroom. You just can't remember, remember the next them. day. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if only so you it, remember. We should have recorded it. 
And, and, and now this might have been in a supplemental interview for Eric Clapton's book when it came out, but I remember they, because it was, it was probably like a guitar world because that's, that's kind of like what, you know, what guitar world's going to focus on more so than anything else mm-hmm. is his, his, his interaction with other guitar players. But he was like, yeah, I was kind of reminded of the time that, now he frames it as he was supporting some candidate and was basically spouting this candidate's party line. And I'm like, so wait a minute. Right. <laughs> Wait, did Hitler so run again drunk? in 76? Yeah. <laughs> you were so drunk and so high. Jim Hitler for parliament. That, yeah, that you thought that this was like, I mean, I, were, you, were you brown out drunk? <laughs> I, that's about the only way that, that someone could explain that to me. And I would be like, yeah, kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fuck them. Get them out of here. Yeah, I don't even know what a wog is, but fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because it just sounds like something you do when you don't, you know, when you're fucking barely conscious and you're fighting this to, 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 to stay awake. So I, I don't know. Well, you know, this, I do, this I do know, I do up. know that, by the way, he's not I, separating the artist from the art. Clapton's not a very good guy, period. No. He's, yeah. I mean, he stole his best friend's wife. You know. I mean, and that's not the only time that his dick has, has broke up homes of his friends. You know what I'm saying? Like he's, I think that's why he's, he, 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 when he finally got really clean in the late eighties, like he got real clean. I mean, like started taking it serious and he, he, he opened up his own, uh, uh, crossroads, uh, recovery center. That's why he has that annual fundraiser for it. And he sold all his guitar collection to, is, was to fund that place. I think that's him trying to make amends for, a lifetime of being a horrible mm-hmm. asshole, which I mean, if that's the case, I, more power to him, I guess. Sure. Well, so there's there's a lot of artists that have faced this type of situation, though, and this comes up a lot. In I think I've mentioned it to to you guys before. One of my favorite new newer podcasts that I've been listening to is called No Dogs in Space, and it's a couple that just does they do heavily researched. Uh, long form podcasts on punk bands. Mm-hmm. So uh you know they did like a three or four part series on the damned. They've done the Ramones. Um and, and uh, well, actually those are two pretty good examples of bands that early on in their careers adopted a kind of Nazi look to uh, just with the intention of being, you know, uh, getting a reaction out of somebody, right? They weren't like skinhead bands. And I mean, they're doing Joy Division right now, and they're probably the most egregious. I mean, they take their name directly from oh, what is reported to be a horrible faction of, uh, of rapist Nazis. So um, post-World War II, playing with Nazi-like symbols and, and, and shit. Wasn't it ironic was, it was supposed to be? There was, yeah, I mean, there was... It was so dead that nobody, I, no one would think that you're serious flying a swastika. Yeah, the yeah. parody was almost right there. Like, yeah, it, it was absolutely. I mean, this is around the same time that John Cleese is doing his skit that he ended up getting flack for recently, or for portraying uh, Hitler in a sketch and making light of the Holocaust. Oh, they're, they're coming for Steve Carell then, right? Episode one of The Office, right? Pretends Hitler with a stapler. <laughs> <laughs> you know it is funny i i just as a side note uh uh i i got a free th- you know month of hbo max and i was like all right fuck it why not watch something legally for a change what i no nsa pet print caller <laughs> um but uh big fan by the way I, i'm loving hbo max uh was watching some old episodes of fresh prince and it was one where like Hillary's been, sick and he gives her the like the the cold medicine and he doesn't tell her how much to take and she drinks like the whole bottle and so she's like out on her feet because she's fucking you know it's it's Nyquil type shit and he plays her her assistant slash makeup artist who yes like he's got his shirt tied up uh, and it and, and his tie is like like a band around his head and I'm just like. Uh-oh. Oh shit! How long till someone They're sees this? Will. Yeah, like seriously, how long until this shit gets it gets? Someone goes, 
oh, this is all. Oh, oh, and it, ten years ago, I, I if I had to, if somebody, someone said, why would you think someone would be upset about that? I would say probably because of the how they're representing gay people. Now it's because it's not a gay person playing that role. No matter how swishy they're playing the role, it's not a gay person. Well, you know, he'll get so some, you can't have that. He's black. They'll cut him some slack. He's got that going for him. But I mean, like it, it is. It is funny, and then it's just like talking to certain coworkers of mine over the years. You know, they <clears throat> they're they're younger. They're teenagers. They're now in their early twenties in some cases. And, you know, I, I say it for a reason. They think the world started when they came out their mother's gaping maw and there was nothing here before. And, you know, well, there's for the first time ever in Hollywood, there's representation for gay people now. And I'm like, the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. And, and, you know, well, what about if not gay people, trans people, because you've never seen Sidney Lumet's Dog Day Afternoon. That wasn't a thing. Really? You never seen Boys Don't Cry. I mean, d- d- I mean, and that, those are those are the ones you ever that are see serious. Too long, Fu? Yeah, exactly. Uh, exa- that's what I'm saying. Those are the serious ones that I can think of off the top of my head. And by the way, one was in the '70s, one was in the '90s. I'm sure, there's some in the '80s. Oh, uh, every John Water film. Yeah, yeah, there you go. yeah. <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> everything divines in. Yeah, <laughs> you know. I mean, it's. Once again, how, how, how far back are we going to dip? How, how much are we going to be offended for something that happened X amount of years ago? And we're going to say, it right, has to be but, canceled. But okay, but let, let's follow divine logic, right, in this case. So, as long as we don't have to do, eat dog shit, we're fine. <laughs> right, so, so that was uh, a man playing a woman, right? But divine was a character, so I don't know, like... I don't know. I, Divine, I don't, I don't think Divine would have considered her, I, her, him. I don't know what his, her preferred pronouns were because we, we didn't worry about that shit back then. I, but I, I think she, she's, yeah, it's more of a, like a drag queen character is what Divine is than Divine okay. being trans. Well, because well, didn't, didn't, I mean, just like RuPaul, I mean, I know what RuPaul looks like outside of right. the RuPaul persona. You know what I'm saying? We'll put the yeah. makeup back on for an old Navy commercial. I thought thought she was done with it. Well, well, even uh, even if you say that in real life, uh, I don't remember Divine's birth name, but I uh, let, let's say that that she is trans, that she identifies as a as a woman. Well, but she's a trans woman, but she's playing a non-trans woman in the films. So you see what I'm getting at? Like, Ooh. why why would it be okay to portray a non? She should be playing a trans woman. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, nope. In none of those films, she's playing a her. The character is a woman. The character gives birth to other characters. Yeah, you're right. If we're going by these new standards, nope. Sorry, has to be a real woman. Can't play that part. Right. See, and that's where I, 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 please, world, don't let me down on this. Just call the bullshit out and just be like, no, we're not doing this. We're not doing this. There's a reason you don't let your four-year-old tell you what time they're going to bed and what they're going to eat for dinner every night, okay? Treat these people like the four-year-old fucking, uh, the mental four-year-olds they are. You're upset. You'll get over it. Go do something on your own. Go create something on your own if, if you're that upset about it. Stop. Let people enjoy things. Period. End of story. And let but, actors play whatever the fuck they want. Exactly. It's, you didn't oh, beef about Hamilton. Oh, well, of course. No. It, it, oh, I will refrain from naming who said this because I, I just will. I don't want to put him on the spot. But, well, they are in the public. I, no, no. I, someone made a comment on a podcast on a, on, a, on a podcast that I listened to, his Facebook page, about like gender swapping and race swapping in, in movies. And they're like, you know, it, we're not talking about something that has nothing to do it, where, where the race is. It doesn't matter. Race plays an integral part of this story. You swap the races. You're taking a huge chunk of this story out. It's not the same thing now. And the response from the person who ran the podcast was, well, I don't care if white people or straight people get bounced out of roles. I want to see more black people and, and marginalized people uh, you know, from the LGBT community in roles. And it's like, why is it a zero-sum game? Why do you have to take from one group so another group can have shit? 
Isn't there enough for everybody? And hasn't Jordan Peterson proved that if you walk in with, I, 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 hate, to, I hate to say it, but uh, uh, Get Out and Us really ain't all that fucking original. This is, but they're well done movies. And he walked in. He he flat out said, "I won't. I won't put white people starring in my movies." Okay, good. Go ahead, Spike Lee. Militant midgen all the way, bro. Fist in the hey, air, whatever. I mean, Jordan Peele, Jordan Peterson. Jordan, a yeah, not Jordan Peterson. <laughs> I'm Jordan sitting thinking, Peele. what? Oh. <laughs> Jordan Peele. It's Keenan Peele. It's Jordan Peele that makes movies, <laughs> right? Jordan Peterson's that Canadian guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's the prophet. No, no, not Jordan Peterson. Yeah. Sorry, Jordan. <laughs> Jordan. Rich, I think I think you're really nailing something there because, and this reminded me of something that uh, that I learned working at Guitar Center. So, working for the now failing Guitar Center, most of the the shit that they tried to pump into my head was just complete and utter bullshit. But every once in a while, there was a nugget that actually not only just uh, applied appropriately to sales and that job, but to life in general. And the concept of growing the pie was one that I've always really liked. And I had a manager talk to the salespeople in respect of, you're not, you, you have a lot of people on the sales floor that look at like the competition is your, your coworkers, that there's a set number of pieces of pizza and you've got to get as many of those as you can. But in, in reality, what we're trying to do is make the pie bigger so that everybody gets a bigger portion of it. And that's what kind of what you're talking about. They see it as a zero sum game. I have to take from you to get mine instead of adding to the bigger pool of whatever it is, of artwork, of commentary, of ideas. Sorry, I had I had it had it muted. Had a little issue with the dogs in the background. Um absolutely that's I think I think more people need to speak up and stop this 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 like fabricated panic that there's a finite amount of everything in 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 art and it ha- you know you, you know we we have to have equity and split it up all to where everybody's on the exact same no that's the beauty of art my what's art to me can be trash to you and vice versa find your niche work your audience that's what punk wasn't invented to be the mainstream. The mainstream came to punk, all right? That's what you... Be, be punk. Be DIY about it. Mm-hmm. Go out, start your own shit. Just understand, you can't shame people into liking something that they don't care for. And that's another part of this. People, well, I made a movie that's pure representation of the LGBT community, and nobody wants to see it. Did you ever consider maybe you made a shit movie about the LGBT community? Is that possible? Or are you going to blame your fucking prospective customers? Because we know how that works. Look at the dwindling numbers in certain fandoms from these fucking corporations who come in and try to shove a a, a half-baked bullshit product down their throat, looking at you, Star Trek, looking at you, Star Wars. And when they lose their core audience, the first thing they do is they want to try to blame it on, it's all, they're all racist and, 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 and misogynist. No, they don't want bullshit stories. They don't want garbage. They don't want sure. you taking 40 years of setting a character up and blowing that character up and turning the whole universe of like Star Trek into something it was never supposed to be. Star Trek went from this is what the best that humanity has to offer going out and trying to to live in peace with other species. Now it's turned into the gritty break in bed Picard where they say fuck a lot. And I'm yeah. like, get the fuck out of my face, this shit. And you know, I, I'm definitely a bigger Star Wars fan than I ever was a Star Trek fan, but that being said, what's happening to the Star Trek universe is more egregious in my opinion because we've we've attached, we've overlaid a lot of our own personal uh, beliefs and things that we love onto the Star Wars universe. It's, it's fairly flimsy, right? It's, it's a bunch of space stories made to sell toys and lunch boxes to kids ultimately. And yeah, I would say, I would say Star Wars. Whereas Star, Star Trek is like an actual universe of ideas. Yes. It's they're they, they're dealing with big concepts. They're mirroring our own society 
And the bastardization of that, I, I find, even though, again, I'm not much of a fan of it, and I've not been watching the, but I uh, definitely listen to a lot of podcasters that are that are fans and have a lot to say about the uh, the newer series, like uh, John Suntress, who does Word Balloon, longtime Star Trek fan, very disappointed in what they're doing currently. And I, I understand why. I mean, it, it just, do, like, to say that what currently we have in Star Wars doesn't represent what came before, I'm like, eh, in what way? Like, it's. I think it's because you're seeing a lot of things in in Star Wars that aren't really there, and that's fine. That's part of what we we do with art. But yeah, what, what's happening with Star Trek is a real twisting of the of the base concept. Yeah, I mean, to me, Star Wars is sin with the. The the new movies is more. It seems like a lack of planning. Like okay, like the Marvel movies, you can do whatever you want within this movie we're giving you, but at the end you have to move the story forward in this way because this right. is the end goal. You but can't I see, just kill fucking Iron Man and Iron Man Two. But Star War, Star Wars is a more of an open format. You Star Wars is just almost literally a playset. Here's a here's a bunch of tools. Here's some some characters. You got some stormtroopers here. You got some robots here. Here's some lightsabers. Right. Put mix those up. It's like Taco Bell. You got four ingredients. Mix them up into a new thing. Okay. Here's Mandalorian. We took all those and added a Western flavor. Okay, that works. You know. It, so when they do want to go grittier, they can. They're not tied to any like format per se. They're just working within a con, uh, a conceptual structure. Whereas you do that with Star Trek, and what do you have? You have people with weird shit on their foreheads. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like you have nothing. That's, that's, that's funny you say that because that was one of Gene Roddenberry's rules. He said, "No matter what the species, they have to have eyes like humans. If they're yeah. a humanoid of the other species, everything else can be different. They have to have two eyes if they're a humanoid species." And they were like, why? Because we're filming shit, and actors can yeah. express shit with their eyes, okay? <laughs> right. And also, whatever alien race that you're talking about, they're just a, a stand-in for humans. Yeah, yeah. In well, whatever conflict that they're having. And see, that's the thing. Like, if what, what, what's going on with, like, I'm not, a, I'm not a, growing up, I wasn't a huge Star Trek fan. It was, I was a sci-fi kid. I was always into sci-fi more so than, like, fantasy, like, wizards and swords and shit. And so it was constantly on in, in you know, reruns. And then when the next generation come out, that was syndicated. They showed that three, four times a week. So I'd get to, you know, I'd watch the episodes because we didn't have cable and you only had three, four channels at that point. You kind of took what you could get. And it was my sci-fi fix. But what's going on with, with Star Trek is just a complete deconstruction by people who've came in and don't care about 60 years of world building because they want to tell something they basically want to tell a story that has nothing to do with star trek but that story couldn't get greenlit unless they attached it to star trek you, you see what i'm saying like no one would yes. give a fuck yeah like sorry it, it, it would come off as a low rent like like a low rent judge dread or something like you know some dystopian future you know some generic sci-fi you know future shit but they attach it to star trek they they destroy. All, I mean, f fucking Jesus Christ! It's been what thirty four years, thirty three years since Next Generation premiered in nineteen eighty seven. Yeah, it's thirty three years. Picard has arguably more character building than any character from the original series, including the five movies they were in. And they completely just went everything you've known about the man. Now, nope, done. He's he's not that at all. Yeah. Why? I, and I there's thought, no reason for it. I I I did watch. I don't. You know, I think I watched all the way up until like the last couple episodes of the first season of Picard. Jean Luc fan in the house. Jeez. And I I found it um, I found it entertaining, much in the same way that like I liked the uh, uh, the, the what's his name uh, reboots of the. The Star Trek movies. Uh, the guy oh, J.J. Uh, Abrams. Yeah, uh, the J.J. Abrams stuff. I found those movies to be entertaining, too. I didn't recognize anything 
that I saw in previous versions of Star Trek in any, in either of those though. And you know, I've seen it, it was almost impossible to to not see episodes of Star Trek the Next Generation if you were a, a teenage nerd in the 90s. Yeah. And where so it wasn't appointment viewing, but I've seen enough episodes to know I could tell you characters' names, I could tell you general outlines of things in in that show. And I know enough about John Luke Picard's ki- that that character to be completely befuddled by what was going on in that show. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that you know, one of the the beliefs, virtues, whatever you want to call it, that Picard always put forward, or that they had his character put forward, is you can do and make all the right decisions and still not win. But it's the point that you went about it the right way. Just because you're not guaranteed an outcome doesn't mean that you get dragged down to the level of the people who are willing to lie, cheat, and steal, and kill to get what they want. Mm-hmm. You have to rise above it. And you have to understand that ultimately, if everything is political, ultimately politics is the art of compromise. That, those, those nuances and subtleties I have not seen in any new Star Treks in decades now. I and I'm gonna full full disclosure. Didn't didn't really watch Voyager past the first couple seasons. Never got into Deep Space Nine. Seemed like too much like a soap opera set on a space station. Even though, from what I understand, the last few seasons got really good. But whatever, I'll never know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't watch Enterprise. I tried to watch Discovery and laughed my ass off because I'm like, boy, they're retconning everything now. I don't even know what's fucking. Between the J.J. Abrams movies, because he completely changed the timeline. I mean, going back to the original series, and then whoever, because Rick Berman isn't putting out Star Wars anymore. He's the one who took over for Roddenberry when Roddenberry died. But Rick Berman's retired now. I don't know who's running it now, but they're off in fucking left field somewhere playing a different sport trying to say it's still baseball. It ain't. You know what I'm saying? It's It's not. Yeah. But ultimately... Is, does that take away from what came before it? No, it's the it's the the new people who get in to the to Star Trek and are like, well, I don't like the old one. Why is it boring? I can understand you. No, no, it's not boring. It's just you know, well, oh, people living in peace. Right. How is that possible? I, you know, or or my favorite. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You have cancer in the Star Trek universe. You're cured. You have AIDS. You're cured. You're bald. There's nothing we can do for you. Do you think maybe they've evolved as humans enough to where it doesn't matter if you have hair or not? Yeah. <laughs> They're not worried about that. That's not a defining characteristic of a human being. Is whether they have a full luxurious head of hair. How about that? It just, especially the Picard show, just seems like such a, a wasted opportunity. I, set aside the fact that you have like an amazing actor that you get to do, do as the lead for, you know, a, a, a television show. You also have a great character that has already been set up as this, like, like you were saying, he's a political and strategic genius, right? Mm-hmm. So why, do, why do you put a phaser in his hand and send him on a space romp? I don't uh, understand yeah. that. You want to tell a modern drama with this character. You've got plenty of recent examples of pull. Tell the the Breaking Bad type of story. Tell the this is his last ditch. He's got nothing. He's got nothing left, and and he's going to manipulate everybody around him for the outcome that that he believes should be just or something like that. You know, show that you have you have now hours instead of just doing like a feature and having to pack this all this drama into one story. You can. You can draw that out and weave that story together, and they just said, "No, we just we just want androids and aliens and phasers. That's that's really it." They did a Star Wars to it. They're like, "We're just going to take the visual elements and make something, you know, we're going to take the Lego pieces and ignore the instructions and make our own." And sometimes that can work. They sound like they're trying to have them do what, but Billy Shatz did. But if did. that's what if that's what you're making, then why does it have to be Star Trek at all? Is he running around fucking green women? Is he doing that too? Mm, he's a little old to be doing. That. No, but I'm saying like <laughs> Picard wasn't like you got him running around with a phaser. He wasn't that like yeah. Well, that, my little that exposure was, to the Star Trek universe, he wasn't that guy. That's okay. It took as my because my stepmother, a huge Star Trek fan, 
And she said it took the next generation, two actors and characters to replace William Shatner. Because you got the mm-hmm. the cerebral side in Picard, and you got the, the, the action, go out, beat him up, and woo the women in Riker, the first officer. Yep. Now it's like they're trying to they're trying to like deconstruct and retcon Picard to where he's like this almost like I, <sighs> he's an action hero. Like they're trying to diff- give him back in, those those uh, the, the qualities that he never had. Yeah. Of- yeah, kind of like they did in the movies. That's why, like you know, First Contact. Yeah, it was it was an it was an entertaining popcorn flick. But I'm like, why is Picard running around firing a Tommy gun, screaming, top of his lungs? That's not Picard. Like that's like the Borg in in the yeah. in the TV show. The Borg captured him, assimilated him, and tried to turn him into the supreme leader, and he never lost his cool. Man, you know what I'm saying? Like, to the did. whole situation. I mean, like, I, I was friends with a whole family of Trekkies. I've seen my share of, of Star Trek. And to know enough that, yeah, man, he's not the, he wasn't the run around, shoot him up captain. Yeah. But, I mean, I also understand you got to, I guess you got to change with the times. I just wish that, Jesus Christ, Star Trek is there to tell parables, to use other worlds, other species, yeah, to, to, to reflect back on us. Without without shoving it down your throat and going message, so you know. Yeah, but there is the, there is that bit of old school sci fi where that message is just cleanly laid over top. You know, somebody at at, at some point during the end has to say, "Well, if only uh, you know, man didn't try and and mess so much with nature, wouldn't have come back and bit him on the ass." There there should be a message in there, definitely. The scientists show remorse for creating Godzilla. Yeah. Well, no, no, and that's what I'm saying. Like, that's, but it's just, I, I would almost have more respect. Like, one, I'm tired of, I'm, t- I'm so tired of prequels. I'm so tired of, I, I don't care about Alfred Butler's story. I don't want to see an Alfred show. I don't want to see another fucking Gotham version 2.0. I, I'm over it. We know how Batman became Batman. We get it. You've told the story with, you know, you've told the story of the villains. Or a version of it, we get it. Can we move the story forward? And that's what Star Trek is also doing a lot of. They're going back and retconning the past and changing, you know, okay, the history that we've that we've all known. If you're a, if you're a Star Trek fan, to the point where it's like I don't even know who the fuck. How many Enterprises were there before the the Enterprise we saw in the original series? Two, three, supposedly now. Really, really. I mean, you you don't even. It's people coming in and playing with with toys in the sandbox that are, aren't theirs, and I almost would they would just rather they would do what Star Wars has done plenty of times, especially with any new take on Star Wars, like Knights of the Old Republic, set it three four thousand years before the Star Wars we know. Mm-hmm. It's still the same universe, but it's far enough away to where, except for the smallest ripples, it's not really going to affect what's going on as far as we know, or set it in the future and move the story forward. If they had set, if they had taken the setting for Picard and, and put it in the future and put it with new characters, like, this is what the Federation has basically, like, just, like, broke down into. This is the, you know, this is, this is the outcome of this shit, and they're trying to right the ship. I could get on board with that. But that's not what they're doing. They're acting like, oh, it's been shit this entire time, and the Federation has just ignored it because they're, you know, the Federation. And, of course, every every g- military and government corporations are bad because we work in Hollywood. Okay. Yeah, I just, yeah, it's a lot of really lazy writing. Like, they have to undo all the progress that mankind had made up until the next generation so that they could have some some decent drama tropes to play with. Exactly. they're unimaginative. By the way, you are a misogynist. Not one mention of Captain Janeway. Uh, well, no, I said Voyager. I watched the first couple seasons. I just... I, they, Voyager, Voyager started at the beginning of my discovering pussy, drugs, and rock and roll. Uh, uh, so, yeah, well, fair well, enough. I, I had discovered uh, uh, pussy and, and, and rock and roll, but like... I was getting firsthand experience with all of them. <laughs> so I didn't watch TV from like 94, 95 to like 2000. So I, I missed out on a lot of Voyager. Yeah, there's a, 
yeah, mine. I have a chunk like that. Sports. It's, a, it's a little later than yours, but yeah, I have a chunk like that as well. Like there's just a cultural void for me where things did not exist. But I mean, if you know, sports, I, I watch that. But that's about the only TV I watched. So, I don't even think I owned one. <laughs> I got my first apartment for the first six months I was there. Oh man, unregimented. ChristopherMedia.net. Progressive presents the sounds of the old world. The year is 2019, and someone is getting up to use the bathroom at the stadium. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. You mind if I just squeeze by here? This has been the sounds of the old world. Brought to you by Progressive, where drivers can still switch and save like it's 2019. Quote today at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspath. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. You heard that safe drivers get rewarded with Snapshot from Progressive, so you went online to check it out. But then you saw an ad for a vintage baseball cap, and now you find yourself checking the stats of that team's second baseman in 97, wondering why his stolen base total dropped after his rookie season. Wonder how much his rookie card is worth. Yes, they said it was easy to save money with Snapshot from Progressive, but they forgot about the rest of the Internet. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Snapshot not available in California, North Carolina, or from all agents. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspath. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. ChristopherMedia.net Unregimented Well, anything else we want to bring up here? Uh, I just found out that you can play uh, somebody found a hack for the new uh, Miles Morales Spider-Man game where you can turn him into uh, one of those outdoor heater things you know, that have the little umbrella over top of it you put on like a, a smoking patio <laughs> but it's just one of those swinging around the city. It's very oh, entertaining to watch. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up because a few weeks ago I meant to bring that game up and I, we got sidetracked and I forgot. Oh, but, yeah. Um, now that and the Spider-Man game that come out for the PlayStation 4, which I, I guess this is kind of like a... They're not, the way it was described in, in, in some of the reviews, the way Sony is trying to put it, is this isn't a sequel. This is a, an add-on to the Spider-Man 4 game, like a companion piece. It's right. not a true sequel. Um, well, I think that's because that this, the bones of this are probably all coming from what was originally going to be DLC. Oh, yeah. Wasn't yeah, yeah. That, well, Miles was going to be a DLC character before, they rea- before the movie came out, and they were like, oh, oh, no, this is its own thing. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I was hoping that like all of the, uh, the, the crazy versions of Spider-Man we're going to be available for yeah. DLC, kind of like they did with uh, the Batman Arkham series. Right. Um, Got to play it was like funny the because, 66 Batman. That was kick ass. It was funny because, uh, it, 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 you know, this was last year. So it was, I can't say 2020, 2020, but, but the internet in 2019 never lets me down. When they announced the game was coming out this year, last year, I commented on the thread. I'm like, I kind of hope they do DLC and you get like, you know, Peter Porker to, you know, Spider Ham. Yeah. And some of the extra people from the multiverse. And this this person, I angry face reacted immediately and it came, why do you want that? And I'm like, what? Uh-huh. Why, would, why wouldn't I? <laughs> I'm like, what? Well, it was just like in Arkham when you had like, you know, Robin, Red Hood, Nightwing, different versions of Batman, different versions oh, of Catwoman. Yeah, Woman, get to play as versions. Nightwing. I'm like, why yeah. wouldn't you want that? I'll pay ten bucks to download though, even if they're just skins, whatever. Yeah. As long as there's 
but but I mean, I I I would really want some more, you know, some story to go along with it, some special missions for these characters. I yeah, I think you just are upset. There's a black Spider Man, and I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> I said I wanted. <laughs> Four alternate reality Spider Men, which includes Spider Gwen. Right, you were being, being sarcastic. Oh, what's ne- a black Spider Man now? What's next? A pig Spider Man? I swear to God, and that's when I was like, okay, you're you you're too woke for school, dude. Sorry, click. You know what I'm saying? Like, done with you. <laughs> but what I find funny is that th- th- those games Sony put out. Now, obviously, Marvel owns. Uh, uh, or DC, or DC, mm-mm-mm. Disney owns Marvel, but they do they now own the rights to Spider Man again? Did Sony or is Sony just sharing them with Marvel? With with uh, Disney? yeah, no, that Sony's still cooperating with the the uh, Spider Man license, but okay. they still absolutely own it, and they still have a lot in the works. They're and I can tell you, not, that, they're not planning on letting it go anytime soon. I haven't played the the Miles Morales game. Simply, I haven't because either. Just, I've I've almost done a hundred percent the original. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm still work, I'm still working on side on ex- missions, other shit, extra I stuff. Beat, I beat the entire thing, DLCs and all, on like extreme mode or whatever. Like I've played the fuck out of that game. Uh, see, okay, there's there's my point. So Sony, who has the rights to Spider Man, does something that anybody who's putting on a superhero game really needs to do. Look at the ones that have done well. Mm-hmm. Take from them what you can. Look at the ones that have done very poorly and avoid that, like the plague. Period. End of story. And what happens? The original Spider-Man comes out, the Miles Morales Spider-Man comes out, and around the same time that Avengers game drops. Yep. That thing is a fucking piece of shit, huge flop. That it has looks cost like Disney $50 million. It's insane. They've already dropped the price on it. And I, I said to a buddy that I work with, I'm like, oh, it's like 30 bucks now. And he's like, no, nah, it's still not worth it. Yeah, because they, they went the whole games as a service route with it to where like, OK, you log in every day and you can you can get like goals and you, you complete them and it gives you extra gear. But it doesn't change the looks of the heroes and it doesn't change your uniforms. And people are like, wait a minute, you want me to pay a, every two, three months? Fifteen twenty dollars for the new season pass on a game that I, I can't even hold my interest through the main story. They they wanted this to be like Strike Force or one of those uh, mobile games that are constant dollar generators. Yep. Yeah. And people, but but those people are paying like dollars at a time. They're like, oh yeah, oh, I'll send them another dollar ninety nine, get some new skins, some new characters. I was talking to my cousin's wife. Uh, on, this is on like Thanksgiving. You, you drop sixty bucks on the game, and then ten bucks every time that they release some new pack. Like that's adding up quick. Yeah, I I, I talked to my my cousin's wife on Thanksgiving, and we, you know we were talking about gaming and stuff, and she's like, my mom got into some phone game like a month later she dropped 250 bucks on it jesus christ i'm like how what the fuck was she buying well because you know they you know what they do they give you so many free lives and you gotta wait and she's like well i didn't want to wait so i just kept buying free lives and then they had a package of like you know whatever for 50 bucks and i'm like yeah no you you give them a dollar or two here or there and then you're like well i'm just wasting money buying these little you know, lives a, a few at a time. I'm going to get this fifty dollar pack, and that'll that'll get me that'll set me up for a while. And you burn through that in an afternoon. Well, I mean, it also if you're going to offer, if you're going to take a a, a a game and try to make it a game games as a service, to where you're constantly paying and updating stuff. Mm-hmm. I think it's probably better to go with a new IP and you better understand the psychology behind it, which is the, you got to dole out rewards at a lot more of a pace than that game does. And they have to be substantial rewards. Like destiny is, is a game you, well now you can get it for free. It's free to play now or destiny too. But you know, they have four seasons a year, roughly every uh, three months. So yeah, yeah. It works out to where it's quarterly. And that's like 10, 15 bucks. 
And then every two, three years, they, they come out with a major update, which is like between 30 and 50 bucks. But the, the gear you get when you complete goals actually powers you up, actually changes your character. There's yeah. multiplayer. So you can play with each other. And if these dogs don't shut up, there's about to be two less fucking dogs <laughs> on this planet. Motherfucker, fuck around, find out. I'll act like Kyle Rittenauer up in that motherfucker. I swear <laughs> to God, shut up. But, sorry. I, I, oof, that's day and night. It drives me nuts. Dogs, you're about to get a bad coffee endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, like, there's nothing like that. There's no multiplayer with this game. I don't know how they spent as many millions of dollars developing this game. And it's just apparently just like a very linear game, nothing out of the ordinary. And it's just like, oh, just keep giving us money, though. That's the important part. It's like, no, people are tired of that shit. Yeah, I'm tired of I'm tired of paying sixty. By the way, games are going up next generation to seventy bucks. If I'm dropping seventy bucks on a game, and you tell me now I got to drop another thirty on a on a on a, on a DLC pass, I think I, I think we're not necessarily going to see an escalation in pricing. I think we're going to see a wider variety. I mean, the Miles Morales game is fifty dollars. That's not a sale price. That's that's always what it was advertised as. And I think you know we're going to see games that are seventy dollars and more, but are a- able to justify that. You know, I'm not saying that there aren't games that aren't worth seventy dollars. The I'm finally playing uh, The Last of Us. I got the remastered edition of the first version yeah. uh, for ten dollars on sale. That game is so engrossing. It's the only video game that I've played so far where I don't actually do anything else. I'm not listening to a podcast or music or trying to eat something. I'm like in that game. Well, there's also and, parts of that game. If you're not, you get fucked up real quick. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and it sucks you into it. And I would, you know, if you're telling me a game like that, I would gladly pay $70 for it. And it's the attention to detail to that. I mean, the Good getting a halfway decent voice cast goes a long way to keeping uh, one in, actually engaged in in the game, and you know, and it's not about like yeah, it's a remastered version and everything, but still, you're like, oh, that water looks stupid, and you know, you, you're not engrossed in how pretty everything is. You're engrossed in the actual story that they're they're putting you through, and also that story was uh, there was a lot more layers to it than mm-hmm. than people. A, a lot of people, I think, took from it through first playthrough, like the 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 story with when they. Have you played through the game? No, uh, so yeah, don't spoil anything for me because I'm really okay. into it. But I just got to the part where they got separated. Uh, the 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 dude gets punctured. She has to find some antibiotics, and they get split up. Okay, so you've already had the part where he goes to get a vehicle from his buddy. Yes. Okay. If you read all the notes and the extracurricular shit that you can completely skip over and it not affect gameplay, but which I have and I never it, do. I scan you, over that shit usually in games, and this I'm like reading everything. You find out that his that Joel's buddy, who we went to go visit. Mm-hmm. His friend who killed himself was his partner, his lover. Absolutely. He doesn't you know, say it. The character never says it, but you find out from his letters. It, it's a video game that does what we say you're supposed to do in cinema. Show, don't tell. Yes. It's not. And, and, and on top of that, he's a gay character in a triple A game that was, I mean, it was on most people's top of their fucking list, if not the top. It was in the top three of the year it came out, I remember. Yep. Because I didn't have a PS3 at the time, and I, I was like, damn, this is the first game I feel like I'm missing out on. But it's a, it's a gay character in a AAA massive game that's not, I'm gay. He, does, he doesn't swish. It's yeah. not his defining quality. Right. He's, he's, you're a human being. And has nothing to do with whether he's a good guy or not, would protect exactly. us from zombies or has car parts. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, like, this is, that's, there you go. I mean, it, you have a game, it has representation. And that's proper representation. I don't. It's not pandering and it's not, it's right. not, it's not doling it out like we're children who can't handle 
anything more than a, you know, a, a tiny bite size of something. And I appreciate the game for that. Now, I haven't played the second one. second one, from what I hear, is, a, is, a, is kind of a messy game as far yeah. as the mechanics. They tried to add a couple improvements, and it ended up being more buggy, I guess. I'll wait for the price to come down. That's for, <laughs> I'm almost over fucking consoles, period. If it wasn't for sports games, I would be so over consoles. Yeah. Because I, I honestly, well, I, besides like one or two games, I pretty much play my computer, my games on my computer more than on my consoles anymore. So. Yeah, and I don't, I'm not buying, I'm buying next to nothing at full price. Like it, it's got to be a game that I'm really interested in. If I'm going to drop four, I'm going to wait for it to go down to like 40 bucks usually. Oh, I, I think in the and next... that's if I'm like really excited. Sony released a statement saying that they're going to, they plan on supporting the PS4 for at least another three years before yeah. they phase it out. Like they, they still have PS3 servers up for multiplayer games. Mm-hmm. You know, so I mean, like, Sony's pretty good about that. Um, Microsoft has Game Pass now, so they don't give a fuck about backwards compatibility because they just give it to you through Game Pass. You pay a right. monthly fee, and you just get like 250 games from them. Um, but it, I'm gonna tell you right now, from here on, like, especially like, give it till about summer or next year, you're gonna start seeing some really good games for the PS4, really cheap, because people are gonna. Then they're going to have six months of getting PS5s installed in their customer bases houses. Yep. More and more people get them. I mean, there's there's already a shortage of the fucking things. There's already fucking people I've talked to. There's like, yeah, I got a uh, rain check, and they're, they're saying maybe I can, you know, if I'm lucky, I can get my PS5 like sometime around Valentine's Day. Damn. I'm like, shit. It's like that. Damn. You know, meanwhile, there's so many Xbox fucking new Xboxes floating around. Motherfuckers are blowing vape smoke into it and putting it on the internet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah, I mean, I, now's a good time to, to to catch up. That's what I did with the PS3. I bought a PS3 six months before PS4 dropped, and that was in 2013. I bought my PS3 in 2012. Uh, yeah, I bought until, my PS4 at the beginning of this year. <laughs> Yeah, I bought my PS4 in 2016, so it had been out for almost four years. So I was playing all of the good games for PS3 for dirt cheap, going to GameStop, of course, mm-hmm. now with this Sony or, or PlayStation Now and, and, and Game Pass that Microsoft has. They're trying to put the stake through the heart of used gaming via killing off GameStop. And they're doing a pretty good job of it, but I mean, yeah, it, like I said, give it about six months. Let, let let Sony really start running with the PS5 and to where there's enough owners and consoles in homes to where they can fucking start pushing that shit and watch the prices drop and just start color, just sale. Great, wonderful. You walk in with a hundred bucks and walk out with fifteen games sometimes. Yeah, good and, games too. Yeah, and, and it's not like the the newer games coming out. Uh, they're not showing any intention of being PS5 exclusive for anything yet, because they know how many console PS4 consoles are out there still in use. Oh, it's the best-selling video game system of all time. It passed the PS2. Yeah. So you know, if I'm getting the you know not the best version of, it, but it still looks great. That's the thing is like it's not with these new generations. Of, of gaming systems, you're not doing anything different with the mechanics of it. It's all visual. I mean, it's, it's great. They look great, but I'm not going to drop another 500 bucks so I can play the same games in a different resolution. Visual, and they're adding solid-state hard drives, so faster load times. Sure, yeah. Okay. That's that's really... I, I mean, I, I've, I've talked to people online who have... I trust their opinion. I'm in gaming groups with, and they, you know, got... One of the two, uh, on, on you know on launch day, and I'm like, you've had it for a while now. It's been a couple of weeks. What are your what are your thoughts? And they're like, maybe it's just the lack of games out. But like, yeah, it's nice. It runs at a steady 60 frames per second in 4K and true 4K. Mm. But I mean, does that really affect enjoying a game? 
And I'm like, doesn't sound like it. Doesn't sound like it's worth drop five, dropping five hundred fucking dollars on that when I could probably for three hundred dollars upgrade my computer to do the exact same thing, and go to and go to GOG and Steam and buy games for fucking pennies on the well, dollar. Well, right. In and of itself, it's not going to mean anything. It's like you could paint the most realistic looking tree, but if it's a boring looking composition, then nobody gives a shit. They're like, exactly. oh yeah, that's a, that's interesting. So. Once you do get those great graphics utilized in the right way that, that, uh, where it actually does find a way to bring you deeper into the game, and it does that alongside of a well-crafted plot, good voice actors, good writing, you know, then that'll totally suck you in and you'll see the real difference in the next generation consoles. Well, it's usually... And it's it's going to take, take a feedback cycle, I think. To do that, it's not going to be the first run games for these new consoles. It's going to take how how people experience and play these games on these systems to tell them what what they need to do. And this is what I this is what I love so much about video games. It's actually seeing that, especially when you're when you're buying older systems like we were talking about. You get to go, okay, well, let's I'll play uh, you know Assassin's Creed Origins, and then I played Odyssey. And I see the differences, the changes that they made to the gaming, uh, the the structure of the game, and the mechanics of the game, and they're all positive. And I'm like, this is a direct result of people of them getting feedback of saying, hey, here's what I liked about your game. Here's why I stopped playing it. And they listen to that and go, okay, here's how we can improve it. Oh yeah, and, well they're coming out with the, the the they're calling it the the Mass Effect Legendary Collection, and mm-hmm. that's a that's a huge sprawling three game RPG that decisions from you know saves from one game carries over to the other carries over to the third, et cetera, et cetera. But they've they went back and they, they not just gave it a visual touch up, but they gave it a like the original game that's now fourteen years old, thirteen years old. They gave it a performance as far as playing and handling. They were like, our standards have grown in leaps and bounds in just the 13 years. Yeah. And we couldn't put that game out as it came out originally and expect anyone to sit through some of those those parts. You know, there's vehicle there's vehicle parts of that game that it's pulling teeth, man, to get to, I mean, it is miserable to go back and play. That's why I've replayed 2 and 3 multiple multiple times and I've only replayed one to get the you can play through as a good guy or a bad guy and I played through as both. But once I did that, I was like, I'm done with that. I ain't going back to that shit. So it's it's like you said, they've they've learned. And the first Assassin's Creed game I played was not the first one. It was like second or third or some shit. I don't know what the fuck it was. But when I went back and played the first one, I was like, this is now unplayable because I've played the new one. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is just jumping in the haystacks off of buildings and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, this, is, this isn't fun. Right. So, and. And it's that, so Penn Gillette was talking about this on his podcast last week, how he got into video games, which was through, I think it was Mickey Dolenz from the Monkees. And he was talking to him about, uh, Mickey was like, do you play video games? He asked, and he's like, no, there's nothing that interests me there. And he's like, well, dude, video games is just the new rock and roll. Remember when we were kids and rock and roll was coming up and all our parents didn't get it? They didn't understand, and we were okay with that. That's exactly what's happening in video game in, in video games right now. And there's that that same um, fast evolution that happened. I mean, you look at what happened to guitar based music from you know from the 50s to the 60s. It was like running at light speed. Oh yeah, people were just. Bouncing ideas off of one another. One person does one thing weird with it, bends a note in a certain way, adds a certain effect to it. That gives somebody else an idea, and and it just keeps stacking and stacking and stacking. And that's what's happening with video games right now. And they're finding ways, like you were illustrating earlier with the, the gay character in The Last of Us. They're finding ways to get their message through with their art as well in ways that aren't just slapping you across the face. Here comes the message. Well, I mean, let's be honest. If they're because it's not technically zombies in the sense of like Romero zombies in that mm-hmm. game, it's it's a it's a spore that takes over human mind and makes them yeah. feral, basically. But let's be honest. 
in the real world, if that happened, and someone and 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 and, and life was as dire as it is in that game, and some asshole was running around going, "I just want you to know, I'm gay," and right. my pronouns are shut the fuck up, dude. Seriously. We're worried about fucking surviving, and you want to fucking yell at us about your pronouns? But not even, yeah, it wouldn't even register on your radar. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you, I like to suck dick. Great. I'll let you know if I find one. Anyway, keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> Pretty much. And that's why I liked it. I was like, hey, you know what? That's a little, that's, because that's what, that's what. Also, end of the world, you might be thinking, hey, I like getting my dick sucked. Wait a minute. <laughs> Well, you know, we are going to die here soon. And as long as I don't make eye contact with you, it's not gay. So, but no, I mean, hey, man, I, it's also, believe it or not, it's more real. Isn't it? I know Twitter and Facebook and, and Reddit and, and all these fucking places will have you believe different because, you know, my four year old today said he doesn't understand the patriarchy and the blah, 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 blah systematic racism, and everybody on the bus clapped. You're like, get the fuck out of here. Your four year old did not say that. It's like someone, if, you, if your four-year-old's spouting a shit like that, according to you, that's like someone who has a vegetarian cat. We all know who's calling the shots in that fucking right. eating time, and it ain't the cat. You know what I'm saying? No, he loves the rice cauliflower. <laughs> but, but, I mean, like, it's, it was case in point. A buddy of mine I used to work with, Corey, he played it. Corey's gay. I was like, so did you pick up that the guy was gay? And he's like. What guy? I forget his name, but I was like, yeah, the guy when you Bill. go to get, to get to Bill, yes, when you go to get the car. And he's like, was he? I was like, did you look at all the, the clues and the notes and everything about that? And you can actually run up, go into the house where his, his partner killed himself. He's hanging from the ceiling. You find his suicide note, which yeah. he doesn't show it to Bill. Yeah. Which is another thing I like about that game, actually. It doesn't give you decisions. I'm like, I, there, there are the right games for decisions. Like a game like the uh, the Outer Worlds was really fun, and that that's a shorter game where the whole thing is you could play it through multiple times and have drastically different outcomes, and uh, that's all based on the decisions that you make. Last of Us is is a solid plot. Let's just play through it. Don't give me these options to like like you know answer questions a certain way. I don't want to. I want to feel like I'm missing out. Or I could have gone a different way in the game. I want to know that I'm, I'm playing through the story. So yeah, he but yeah, he doesn't show. They don't even give you the option to you know whether he's going to show Bill the note or not. He just decides uh, Bill's torn up about this. He doesn't need to know the reason why right now. Like exactly, let's sleep and logs die. No need to rip the fucking scab off and keep picking at it. And I mean that's that's a level of subtlety that I don't even expect from fucking movies. At least. Hollywood right. blockbusters anymore. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things I was, I was trying to explain to a buddy of mine. I'm like, do you know how rare it is for me to watch an action movie now and give a single fuck about any character in that movie? Like, probably, the, it, it, that's not an established character. Oh, God. Probably the, last, probably the last one that did it for me was Fury Road, and not Max. Yeah. It was Furiosa and the, and the, the, the right. wives and uh, Nux. Like... I, I was like, oh, man, really? I mean, I, you knew Nux wasn't going to make it to the end, but it was like, maybe he will. And you hold out a little bit of hope, then you realize, this is the Mad Max world. No, there's no hope. <laughs> I tried to watch the new, uh, the newest Guy Ritchie joint, The Gentleman. Oh, my I, God. I, could, like, I, I watched half good. the movie, and I was like, I could not give a fuck about any of these characters. Exactly. It's and total I think I, nonsense. And it's I not think, even much action. It's just a lot of guys with funny accents running around in sharp suits. Well, I mean, even, like, I like the, I like the first two Lethal Weapon movies. I'm one sure. of the rare Lethal Weapon fans that will die on the hill of the original ending for two they should have kept as they filmed it, which is Riggs dies at the end. And then you see Murtaugh and his family at the grave site, and he's buried next to his wife. Because mm-hmm. the amount of punishment, as a kid, when I saw that, when I was like 12, when it came out, I had no idea the amount of physical punishment he took. He was shot multiple times, like eight times, stabbed, got his ass kicked. He's going to die. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's just be honest here. No, he's, he's not Superman. He's Martin Riggs. There's a difference right. there. And, but still, even with saying that, 
like the third movie has its redeeming qualities, and to a lesser extent, even the fourth movie has its redeeming qualities. You cared about these characters. Or even if you didn't really care, you at least knew about them. You could... Red Letter Media did something for the for the, the the prequel Star Wars movies and the original Star Wars movies. And they sat fans of Star Wars down and they interviewed him. And they said, without saying what he looks like or what he does, describe the character we, we give you. And they were like, describe Han Solo. Oh, he's like a swashbuckling, like bad boy with a heart of gold and blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now... Describe Mace Windu. <laughs> uh, he's black. Bald, he's a Jedi master, and he has a purple lightsaber. Does yeah. he look like, like, like a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Say, baby Yoda, look like a bitch one yeah. more time. I dare you. I, 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 du- I double dare you, motherfucker. <laughs> Say oh, he's, got, he's got a name now. <laughs> yeah, Grogu. Grogu. But, <laughs> That's pay, that, but like, no, no longer I mean, the child. I think it was, isn't that Little Wayne's brand of weed? Yeah, right. <laughs> yep. Fuck. But I just thought it was funny because literally the original, the original Star Wars movies, almost every character they give, they could describe something about them. They and are, then the, are the, the prequels. Yes. <laughs> the prequels are like, um, describe Anakin in the second Star Wars movie. He's angry about his mom. The boy who doesn't mommy like issues. Shame. That's not a character trait. <laughs> not liking sand is not a character trait. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, and it's just, that's kind of how I feel. I feel that it, it, you want story and character development, you go to television now. What is it, what is it uh, 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 Todd used to say all the time about Marshall McLuhan uh, in his book, uh, what was it, like On Media or something? He basically said, when the new medium comes out, people think it makes the old medium obsolete. The truth is, as we get more comfortable with the new medium, I'm paraphrasing like a motherfucker here, but this is the, essentially what he was getting at. The truth is, once we get more comfortable with the new medium, the old medium has to become more of an art. Because television used to be seen as like the wasteland for actors. Oh, you're on a television show? What, you couldn't right. make it as a movie star? Now? Oh, you're in Sharknado 8, Tara Reed. Yeah, okay, I'm good on that. <laughs> I'm going to be on Mad, Mad, Mad Men Season 7 here, okay? You, you go ahead and enjoy Sharknado with Ian Zeering, okay? You know, you stop by the Peach Pit and see Zack Attack on your way back or whatever the fuck, you know? like. So I, it, I kind of feel it's done that. And unfortunately, we have a lot of people in Hollywood who've just ran with it. Like, it doesn't matter. Just five, ten minutes of wisecracking and show that, you know, he has a girlfriend, or he gets along with his partner, or he has a kid that he loves, and then we'll get to the blow. We're going to blow shit up real good for the next two hours. And that doesn't work for me. I need something more than that. But then when I watch it, when I watch an action movie that I liked, like Drive, I've told other people about that movie, and they're like, that movie's boring as fuck. I'm like, you thought Drive was boring? You thought that, seriously? You thought that fucking scene in the, in the, in the elevator wasn't shit? That you didn't feel the tension building through that movie? Nope, there weren't enough explosions. Okay, well then, you are who Marvel movies are made for. Apparently, I am I am phasing out of that. <laughs> I need something. Marvel's not a good one to use. DC movies are made for. I need something more out of that. I need a little bit of a character development here, which hopefully we'll get when a new Wonder Woman comes out on HBO Max, which... Is that pretty much it for theater? Are we sounding the death knell for theaters like as we've known them? I mean, yeah, it's, it's, <sighs> this year's pushing a lot of things into. This year had fast forward on a lot of industries, in my opinion, and the movie industry I, is going to be one of them. It's going to be like cars, you know. Is the electric vehicle going to kill gas powered vehicles? No, it's just going to make it more of a specialty thing. Well, that's what I was going to say. The the there's a theater in downtown Wayne that a, I, I, it's a little, it's called the state theater. It's not the state theater that's in, obviously downtown Wayne is not across from Comerica park, but <clears throat> I thought that would go under in a heartbeat. Apparently they're, they're doing okay. And I'm like, is that what theater is going to become? Cause Quentin Tarantino was talking about this on a podcast. He's like, I own a couple theaters where I only show film and we pack the house. Cause we're the only place that does that in the areas that the theaters yeah. I own are in. 
and the, and and the movie geeks come out. That's what keeps us going. But I mean, like these megaplexes, MJR here in Westland, I think that's shut down for good now. Well, also look at music media. So nothing has successfully fully killed vinyl. How many formats have come along and were supposed to be the death knell for vinyl? And it's actually still growing. At least four major day. ones. So the the difference here being that you can get a decent record player and play the shit in your house. You're not going to get a fucking projector. <laughs> Right, you still, If you really want to see film, then you've got to go to a house that shows it. So I, I think there's, yeah, there'll definitely be, uh, there'll definitely be uh, theaters. I have no doubt of that, about that. But are they going to be in every single mall? Well, I don't even know. There's going to be malls around for the theaters. So yeah, that's another conversation. Yeah. Malls were dying anyways. This did not help. Yeah, Westland Mall is I, this year has taken a steep decline, and it's even starting to hit like the bougie ass like Laurel Park Place Mall and like twelve or uh, twelve yeah twelve Oaks is out there in Novi, and I'm like those malls those is that, that's where the money's at. Well, even that's places- the rich that's the rich part of Livonia, and and that's Oakland County, one of the richest counties in the fucking country. Well, even in places like New York City, there's a bunch of places that have been in spots for years and are not renewing their leases. The city's pissed. But it's like, yeah, no, this hurt, and the foot traffic's not coming back, and our lease is up, and we're not renewing it. Yeah, there's been a couple of mainstays, like diners and stuff, that have been tourist spots and, and go-to for locals for fucking 100-plus years that, yeah, I've heard of closed. And I'm like, oh, boy. I'm talking about, like, I think it was, like, the Neiman Marcus flagship store in New York. They're like, nope, sorry. Like, yeah, foot traffic in New York City is down. Di- I mean, it's, it's a, a lot of things got fast forwarded because of Corona. Things that were going to happen anyways this year hurried them up a little bit. Well, I mean, I, I just, I guess as long as you can still go to a, 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 find a movie theater. I mean, and it's not like trying to hunt down a fucking drive-in. You know, I'll be fine because there's certain movies I'm always going to, you know, shit, when, when, this, when the... When they opened up the movie theaters here back in the state, they were talking about they've you know got people distanced at the Wayne State Theater. I'm t- I was talking about earlier, and they were showing like you know Star Wars and Goodfellas and shit. I'm like, I, like the original Star Wars, I've never seen in the theater. I was too young. I'm sure I, I was. You know, my parents were like, "No, we took you to see it. You just don't remember it. You were a baby." But in Goodfellas, I didn't see that in the theater. I had to wait for that. You know, I'd love to see a movie like that in the theater. Now so you can rent it out and run whatever you want. That's what. Uh, yeah, that's the other thing. I think that's hundred bucks. Rent out that theater by myself. Yeah, hundred bucks. Hey, projectionist, play this. Uh, Debbie does Dallas one through five. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a long day. By the way, you can shut the. You don't have to look down what's going down here when I'm really just, sitting in the theater. Just play the first <laughs> ten minutes of each movie, really. <laughs> That's all I need. Fast forward past the talking. Get to the second reel. Yeah. Fuck the talk. This ain't boogie nights. I'm not trying to watch a porno film. I'm trying to watch people fucking. All right. Well, <clears throat> you want to wrap this up, guys? Yep. Yeah. Uh, follow us on Twitter. On Twitter, at Regimented Pod. Like us on Facebook, please, and thank you. Uh, if you want to drop us an email, you can do so at unregimented at ChristopherMedia.net. Uh, while you're ordering all your shit online, till, uh, at least till uh, 2022 is my guess. Uh, you can click through the Amazon banner there, and it uh, doesn't add anything to your total, and it helps us out. If there's a PayPal button there, too, you just want to give us cash, subscribe, you can do that as well. Uh, and where do you listen to us? Everywhere, right? Apple, Spotify, Google, you know, all the big places, iHeartRadio, Spreaker.com. If you just want to cut out the middle, man, you can go to ChristopherMedia.net. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. See ya. Later, guys. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. 
They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspeth, and always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. At Jewelers Mutual, we're a little obsessed with jewelry. Obsessed like auctioneers with Talking Fast. 50, we're going to Pop stars with auto tune. And dentists with asking questions so, how did he propose? after they've put their hands in your mouth. What? Great. Yes, we've made jewelry our obsession for over 100 years. We love it so much, we named our kids Ruby, Amber, and Opal. Venti soy latte for Opal? At Jewelers Mutual, we insure jewelry and only jewelry, which is why people who are also obsessed with jewelry trust us with theirs. Unregimented. ChristopherMedia.net.